This is the Power Lifting America podcast, and today we've got a preview show for the Masters National Championships with experts Melissa Copeland, Amy Hutchinson, and Julia Williams giving picks and analysis for every weight class. The Masters are loaded with 13 reigning world champions like Ellis McLean and Shelley Setner, as well as a host of newcomers to Power Lifting America like Dr. Pat Johnson and the legendary John Laflamme. Who will punch their ticket to the World Championships in Mongolia or the North American Championships in the Cayman Islands? Find out starting June 2nd in Scottsdale, Arizona. The live stream link is on our website under live events, and we'll put it in our Instagram story at Power Lifting underscore America. Thank you to SBD and Alenko for the continued partnership with Power Lifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug-tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com and become a member. Now, let's get to this preview show for the Masters National Championships. What's up? Today, we're talking Masters National Championships with Melissa Copeland, Amy Hutchinson, and Julia Williams. How's it going, y'all? Good. So, we're just a few days away now. This is the competition that's going to determine who makes it onto the U.S. national teams heading to IPF Worlds in Mongolia or the IPF North American Championships in the Cayman Islands. And um, we'll have a head coach, Jim Brown, come on in the next few days and talk about qualifying, um, all the qualifying rules and that kind of thing, current standings, because there are some kind of current standings. Um, but in short, if you win nationals, you're on the team. And uh, any open spots after that are filled by IPF Goodlift points from any Power of the American Nationals events or IPF competition. So um, any masters that did open nationals or that did IPF worlds or NAPF last year can qualify from the alternate pool. So that's, uh, so that's how you're going to get onto the U S national team. So this is the competition that's going to determine the U S national team headed to masters worlds and, and to the NAPFs and Cayman islands. Um, our masters divisions are absolutely stacked. Uh, we got talent across the board, um, all, at all age groups and all weight classes. So let's get right into it with the highlights and then we'll go session by session and have you all make some picks. All right. All right. So, Melissa, what are you looking forward to most about uh, Masters Nationals in Scottsdale? Uh, so generally, I always like to see the Masters because they do cool stuff. Um, but this year specifically, um, I'm looking forward to seeing how Patricia Johnson does now that she's come over. She has the highest nominated total of any of the women. Um, and I think she's probably a really strong contender to go and be the best lifter for the women with that monstrous deadlift that she has. Yeah, and uh, if she slips up or has a bad day in any kind of way, she, you know, she's going against the reigning world champion, Lily Jackson, too. So, I mean, that's just definitely a star-studded session to watch out for. Um, so that'll be a fun one. All right, Amy, who, what are you looking forward to the most about Masters Nationals? Well, so I think a lot of eyes are going to be on Lane Norton already. Um, but as I was going through kind of getting prepared for this preview show, I noticed Lane's actually got competition. So there's Michael Garazzo, who um, at his last meet put up a 737 and a half. Lane put up a 742 and a half at Worlds. So that's only a five kilo difference. And then if you go even farther back, Michael has an 800 total as his best total. And Lane Norton did an 807.5 at Raw Nationals back in 2019. So it's really going to be a question of who comes in, has their best day, and, and, and gets it done. Wow. That's exciting. Uh, I mean, I just assumed Lane Norton was going to like kick walk through nationals and then, you know, have a battle on his hand when he gets to worlds in Mongolia. But, um, well, that's exciting to see that he's going to have a battle right, right out of the gate on his hands. Um, and that sounds like one that's going to be super close. So it'll be, it, you know, it's really exciting because we'll have to see who makes the most lifts, who builds the biggest total. There'll be strategy in play. It'll be a fun one to watch for sure. All right. Um, Julia, who do you, what are you looking forward to the most? I think we have to talk about the the 76 um, women's class because there's a three to four way battle in uh, the M1s, depending how you look at it. And, um, you know, just a really strong lifter in uh, Joe. I, I really don't know how to pronounce her name. And I, I really hope I didn't mispronounce that. But um, I think it's she's Joe. Coming Joe. Yeah. Uh, so she's coming in to, in the Masters twos with a 451. So not only is there a huge battle in the M1, but there's some two actually two really good lifters in the Masters two as well. So that should be fun to watch. All right. Yeah, that's an exciting one. I know I've following Joa's, uh, you know, last year she had a really tough year heading into Worlds. And, and now it's, it seems like she's on the rebound and like making good, good progress. So that'll be exciting one. All right. I've got just the 83s. This is the first thing I'm looking forward to is just the 83s across the board. Uh, starting out with the M1s, we've got Mike Losa, my guy, and Lauren Cohen. And, the, you know, Lauren Cohen's the reigning world champion. They battle head to head at Masters Worlds, came down to the very end. Um, but Lauren, just a few months before that at the NAPFs, bombed out, um, which, which Mike Losa did not bomb out. 
Um, and so, and Mike is now just coming off of, uh, winning the world championships at bench press world championships. He also broke the world record for the M ones. So his lifts are looking really good. We don't know anything about what Lauren Cohen's doing. He doesn't post anything. Um, so we can only judge it based on what he's been doing last year. And he's always like, like at last year at worlds, he got his squat opener, missed his second, um, on depth and which he often misses squats on depth. And then got his third it's kind of miraculously. I thought it was over and, and Mike Loza was going to run away with it. But um, so they get a rematch. Like I said, uh, uh, Lauren did bomb out in, at NAPF just a couple months before that. So it could be exciting. You never know which way it's going to go. Um, in the M2s, there's a newcomer, Jesus Fragoso, who who also has a, a couple of people challenging him from behind. You know, a good battle for second place there. In the M3s, we got the reigning world champion, Willie Wong. Um, so, you know, and then the M4s, we got John Laflamme coming over from USVI. So he's a world champ, best lifter at Worlds, world record holder. But he also might have a little bit of the spotlight stolen from him because in the same weight class in the M4, 83 kilos, we've got Mr. Rick DeGregorio, who is a 93-year-old M4. So uh, with the M4s and with the 83s, I mean, we've got everything from, you know, sub-juniors to juniors all the way up to a 93-year-old competing. And I, I met DeGregorio. Uh, Rick did Gregorio out in Reno. Um, he's part of uh, one of our executive committee member, Tamara, uh, Tamara Lopes crew out there in Reno and super sweet guy. Um, so he'll have his daughter there handling him. And it's like a super feel good story to watch him live for sure. So those are, that's, that's a highlight the 83s. That's a hell of a highlight. So, um, all right, Julia, I'll pass it back over to you. What's the next thing that you're looking forward to? Um, so, I mean, Alice McLean, he's he's coming into this meet with the highest entry total. So I mean, and I think he won best lifter at um, Worlds last year. Um, I mean, he's just he's been he's been in this sport forever um, and is still putting up absolutely ridiculous numbers. I think that he is going to be um, one of the favorites for best lifter. I know he has some competition out of the ninety threes, but um, yeah, 865 entry total, um, still going really strong. So, yeah. Totally. The happiest, uh, has the most fun of anyone. And um, shout out to PA Podcast. We got a really long, three-hour-long interview with Ellis McLean. If you want to hear him and I just ramble on for three hours, uh, go check that out. But he's, he's awesome. Everyone who knows Ellis loves him. So that'll be exciting. All right, Amy, who do you have? What's your, uh, next, what's your next thing? My next thing looking at a couple of individual things to get our eyes on. Um, both of these women will be um, pretty much uncontested, very well ahead of second place. But um, Amy Mason, who's a lifter out of North Carolina, I lift at her gym every once in a while. She was actually ranked high enough to make the pro series finals, but she turned down that invite to come over to Powerlifting America and take her shot at Worlds. Um, so one of the things I'm excited about for Amy is she's always come just shy of a 400 total. And so I want to see her get that 400 total here at nationals. Um, and then of course there's the lovely Melissa Copeland, who is on our call here right now. Um, she will run away with the 84 plus as well, but, uh, coming back from an injury, we're just excited to see what her squat looks like for this one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <Couple That's good>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a couple of uh, big time solo performances there, um, people that are going to put up some big totals, um, some studs, some stars, and uh, people that have a good Stud. shot. At, yeah, have a good shot at making it onto the team and uh, going to Worlds and winning a World Championship, bringing back some gold medals for Team USA. So that's super exciting. All right, Melissa, what's your next thing you're looking forward to? So I think the next thing is going to be the M357. So Dora Justice and, and Lynn Homan spent the last year going back and forth on their competitions. They both come in with their best totals being 267 and a half. Um, Lynn won nationals last year. Dora won worlds. Um, Dora is, has typically been the lighter lifter. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how both of their training has turned out and see who breaks the tie and wins nationals this year. Yeah, for sure. Um, they're both super sweethearts. Like they're just two of the nicest people that you'll meet in the sport. Dora with her dance moves, um, and like her chalk on her face and everything. I mean, she's a huge crowd favorite. She puts on a show when she goes out there. Lynn's a little more quiet. Um, but but definitely Dora puts on a show. She'll scream afterwards. She's always giving the fists afterwards, uh, whenever she comes up after. So it's it's awesome. She's a that's a feel-good story for sure. 
All right. And then uh, for myself, the last thing I'm looking forward to is I'm just looking forward to seeing the whole crew back together again. Um, the, all the different world champions from last year, all the reigning world champions from our master's team that went to Canada last year that are coming back. We've got a lot of them. Lily Jackson, Roberta Carlson, Suzanne LaForge, Vicky Brackett, Shelly Stetner in the M4s. Uh, talk about a solo performance, best lifter at Worlds um, that we're looking forward to. And also Gail Williams. And then on the men's side, we got Lauren Cohen, we got Lane Norton, we got Ellis McLean, Willie Wong, Sam Feltz, John Laflamme coming over from USVI, and Dale Garlett. So that's a lot of world champions, reigning world champions that are going to be here in Scottsdale. So we we did lose a couple on the women's side uh, that are not back, but um, it's cool to see this many of the Masters lifters that won the world championships come back again. So that's exciting. I'm pumped to see that. All right. Anything else you guys want to mention that popped in your mind before we move on and start going session by session? All right, so let's start off. Um, so we're going to lay this out kind of in the order that it's going to come from. You'll have to bear with us. There's a lot of moving parts with Masters. We got four four different age categories and stuff. Um, but to start off with, um, session day one, session one, we have the women. We'll have everything from uh, 52 kilo class up to the 69 kilo class. Looks like we don't have any 42s or 43s or any 47s. Am I right on that? Yes, I think Correct. so. Right. Yeah. All right. So we'll start off with the 52s and we've got a national champion on our hands. Melissa Forbes, as long as she doesn't bomb out, she's going unopposed in the M2s. So congratulations to you, Melissa. If you don't, as long as you don't bomb out, knock on wood. Um, and then in the, is anyone want to say anything about Melissa? Okay. In the 57s, then we'll move into the 57s. Um, so first in the masters ones, we got Katie Whitlock and Kelly Tonini. Anyone want to say anything here or make any picks here? So I, I feel like looking at the nominated totals, so I I know a lot of the masters, but I don't know everybody, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like Kelly's probably got a good lead going in. Um, her last total is 342 and a half. It was a PR for her, but it looks like her totals have been pretty consistently going up. So um, if she has a good day and continues to improve, I think she's she's probably going to win. All right, awesome. So we're getting picks here. You When we get these battles... The three of y'all have to make picks. I'm not doing any picks. So no, one, I can't be on the hot seat. I got to make things with everybody, but you can make picks. Um, so, all right, next person, uh, next thing we have in the 57s, in the M2s, we've got another national champion. And this one has an absolutely massive trophy case at her house um, filled with world championships and national championships. And that's Susie Hartwig Gary. So super excited to see her out there, get her back on the platform. Um, and that's in the 57 M2. So anything you want to say about Susie Gary that hasn't already been said, any accolades you guys want to mention? She's going to be handling, she's going to be game day coaching like 20 lifters as well. Yeah. So it's cool that she's on a pose, um, because then, you know, she kind of takes a little bit of stress off. I mean, she's talking to her uh, a couple months ago. She was talking about maybe just, you know, taking the bar and just putting up, just winning the weight class, just running over, taking the bar on a squat or taking whatever the minimum that you have to take the collars or whatever it is. And then running back to go game day coach, uh, other, all of her lifters and things like that. And it's just not even taking seconds and third. So I'm happy it worked out that she's the only one in her class. All right, let's move 57, uh, 57 kilo master three. Mm -hmm. You've got three of them here. We just talked about it. This is Dora justice, Lynn Holman and Lorraine Efron. And, oh uh, yeah, those are the three for Masters 3. So anything mm -hmm. else you guys want to add? Um, I know Melissa talked about it, but Amy or Julia, you guys want to add anything on this one? Yeah. I don't know these lifters very well. Melissa knows these lifters better. So I'm, I'm curious what the insight is about the, because um, Lynn has had a stronger um, total before. So do you think that she's capable of putting up a, a bigger total again this year? I think anything's possible, right? Like one of the, one of the downsides, unfortunately, to being a master is that, that as you age out, it gets harder and harder to make the gains and to hold on to your totals. So as we move into the M3s, you know, we really do kind of have to wait and see if, if they continue to prove or get back some of their old total, or um, if this is kind of where everybody is right now. But I do think mm -hmm. that both of them are going to put up a fight. For sure. That's going to be going. And if anyone messes up Lorraine's in there as well. Um, so, <clears throat> all right, 57, we got an M4. We got a national champion on our hands, Nancy Sassaman. As long as she doesn't bomb out, knock on wood, pray to the power of gods, we got a national champion there in the M4s. 
So um, anything you want to say about Nancy? All right, then um, we'll keep it moving here. So we got a lot to get through. So we'll just keep on pushing here. So next we got the 63s and in the 63s as anywhere in the world, you know, there's going to be battles and there's going to be a, a lot of talent. That's a, a stacked talent pool for sure. So in, in the 63s in the M ones, we got Eleanor geese. We got Namisha Mitha. We got Amy Mason and Joyce Kuwe. So um, we already mentioned Amy Mason as a, as a brilliant solo performance. Anyone want to mention any of these other lifters? So Joyce and Eleanor are both coached by the same coach as me. Mm -hmm. um, Eleanor's a newer lifter. She's fun to watch. So I'm excited to see her. I've never seen Joyce compete, but I've actually repped Eleanor before. <laughs> um, and she's a fun lifter to watch. So um, I'm looking forward to her. Again, she's a newer lifter. She's only competed a few times. Um, so to, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see her on a national stage, but yeah, I think, I think Amy's got this one pretty solidly. Um, but I'm still excited to see the rest of them compete. Yeah. I'll be interested to see what Joyce's total comes in at. So she, she typically lifts as a 57. So yeah. she's actually gone up this time. Mm -hmm. So this will be the, one of the first meets where she's actually eating into the meat and not cutting. Um, I actually trained with her yesterday. Um, and she's, she's looking pretty good and she's, she's in good spirits about things. So it'll be good to see what she does. All right. And I know Namisha, um, she went to, she was on our NAPF team last year. We got to hang out, spend a lot of time in Panama. She's an awesome person. And she, um, she posts a lot of dancing videos and like dance instruction and stuff like this. So I don't know where her lifts are at, but, uh, I'm, it's always fun to see her. She puts on a, a good, great performance for sure. So, all right, let's, um, and Julia, did you, did you want to add anything or say anything? Otherwise we'll keep it moving here into the 63 M2s. Oh yeah, let's keep it moving. All right. 63 M2s. We've got Michelle Carlosio and Kathy Avery. Um, and so Michelle, I know I can shout out the Carlosios, both her and her husband. They were at NAPF last year in Panama. They also were at Worlds um, in Canada, and they're just huge supporters. They host meets. They, they help run meets down in Florida. So just great people. I'll be looking forward to seeing them. And uh, mm -hmm. especially when, the meet, when they're done lifting, we can have an adult beverage or eat a burger or something like that, and I'll hang out. So um, does anyone know about Kathy Avery? Yeah. So Kathy Avery has been on the national team. Oh, at least once that I know, but probably more. Uh, and, and she is a very strong, very technical lifter and she's, she's very determined on the platform. So, uh, it looks like her training is going well and I would expect her to put a good total. Doesn't, doesn't hurt either that she's being coached to handle by Sam Calhoun. So I was just about to say that. Yeah. She's a Sam Calhoun yeah. lifter. So, you know, she's in good hands. Sam is coming down to handle her. Um, and so I'm excited to see what they do. All right. And then um, next we've got the 63 M4. We got the goat of the M4s, Shelly Stetner right now. Um, you know, world champion, uh, best lifter, owns all four world records in that weight class. Uh, shout out Power of the America podcast. We got uh, a nice interview with Julia and I uh, talking to Shelly for a while. She wants all the smoke. She says she's going to try to out total the M3s. Um, so she's, she's really fiery. I mean, she's talking shit to everyone. Basically, I think, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, Suzanne LaForge basically moved up a weight class, um, to, in, to get out of possibly getting out totaled by her. Uh, so we'll say, we'll talk to Suzanne LaForge and see if that had anything to do with her decision to move up to 69 in the next, uh, in the next weight class. But yeah, Shelly's awesome. Um, she's, you know, one of the solo performances we'll all be looking for. Anyone else want to say anything about Shelly? She'll also be handled by Sam Calhoun. So oh. <laughs> we've got a lot of Sam Calhoun. Yeah. Yeah. So breaking news. Um, yeah, she she mentioned it on the podcast. She'll be handling by by Sam Calhoun. I think she has since announced that she's gonna be being coached she's by Sam Calhoun coached. as well. Yeah, so after. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's uh, you know, I think she just announced that like a couple of days ago. And uh really cool. Breaking news on the Power of the America podcast. All right. Yeah. Um anything else then on Shelly? Mm -hmm. All right. We know she's going to show out. Um, I think she's pretty much healthy. She's got a couple of little th things, you know, going. And I know she's really looking forward to just getting through this and then, you know, putting up a big total at Worlds. So are there masters that don't have things at this point? I was going to say she's yeah. also <laughs> 70 something years old. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I think she had a shoulder she was selling us. Um, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, so her, a little bit of issues on bench. It was hurting her on squad as well. She did a lot of SSB mm -hmm. work and stuff, but, um, it'll be cool to see how her training from going into nationals, how it changes with Sam and going into worlds, you know, maybe she'll, I mean, I think she's still hitting PRs. Uh, she still hit recently. So. Yeah. 
All right. Um, let's move on now to the 69s, unless there's anything else you want to say there. So in the 69s, in the M1s, we've got Annette Morgan and Dana Manning. So does anyone want to say anything about these two lifters? You guys got your spreadsheets ready for, for the 69 M1s? I know Dana Manning trains at Brown's Gym. Uh, doesn't post anything. You know, we talked about Brown's gym, like <laughs> so many times on the juniors at previous show, uh, but she's coming out with the Browns Jim and Janelle Brown are, are coaching her. Um, so I think she's, I think she cut to this weight class. That's the only other thing I know. So yeah. What do you, what do y'all think? Yeah. I was, I think it's tough, especially the, for the folks that don't post anything. Right. So looking at the no. nominated totals, it looks like Annette has got a little bit of an edge over her, but it's a small enough margin that, that who knows what we're actually going to get. Yeah. And I know Dana is very new as well. Go ahead, Amy. Uh, I was just going to say it's it's a smart move not to post. I mean, Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's good coaching to not post. Um, I think the temptation, I think that is the, the downside of masters sometimes of competing in masters because you don't know what your competition is doing because most, a lot of masters tend to not be social media heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, you know, it's very annoying as a competitor to not know what my competition is doing. <laughs> uh, but it's also very smart to not post um, and let um, your competition know. I will say it's very annoying as a social media guy um, <laughs> trying to cover this stuff <laughs> and make content and stuff for Power Team America. It, it can be a little bit annoying when you get all the masters. It should be part of the thing when you sign up to be on the world's team. You got to create an Instagram account. Um, but yeah. So that that's a little bit of a more of a mystery class. It looks like it's close. We know Dana's super new. She's got superstar coaches behind her, um, and I don't know very much about Net Morgan. So we'll see. That'll be an exciting one. It'll be a surprise. Um, all right, let's keep it moving. We got in the sixty nine kilo master two, the reigning world champion Roberta Carlson, and we also have Missy Wheeler in this weight class as well. So what's your take on this one, Melissa? Do you know these two? I so I don't actually know Missy. Um, I do know Roberta. Um, she is also being coached by Sal- Sam Calhoun and has been for, oh gosh, I'm gonna get this wrong, uh, at least the last year, um, probably a little bit longer than that. Um, and she is very excited to put up some large kind of milestone numbers that I'm not going to mention by number, but um, Sam Sam is on board with it. So it, it looks like they're definitely going to have themselves a day. All right. So you're picking Roberta. Uh, I, I am. And um and it sounds like Roberta is going to show out and she's not holding back or anything like that from what you just said. So that will be exciting to see because she's already the reigning world champion. Anything else, Amy or Julia, you want to add to this? Um, All right. No, I'm... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Julia, go ahead. Yeah, Julia. Oh, no, no. I, and I just think it's pretty straightforward here. I mean, 387... Um, as masters too, but uh, 69 kilos is a is a really hefty total, and um, that's going to be nearly impossible, I think, to overcome. Mm-hmm. All right. So then we got the 69 kilo M3s and the aforementioned Suzanne LaForge, reigning world mm-hmm. champion, got scared of getting out total by Shelly and moved up to 69 and we'll have to, we'll have to verify the facts on that one. <laughs> Suzanne is so nice. nationals and have things to say and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we'll bring this up in the press conference afterwards. We'll say, so we heard a rumor started by me and partially by Shelly. <laughs> Shelly gave me the fuel to start it. Um, and then we got Susan Gibson as well. So um, does anyone want to uh, talk about this weight class? Melissa, do you have anything on these two? I don't have anything specifically. Suzanne's got a ton of experience. She's she's definitely been on the on the national team a number of times. She's got a big deadlift. She's really consistent, um, and and she's got a big lead going in. So I I would expect this to go very well for her. For sure, for sure. All right. Anything else? Then we'll move to the sixty nine kilo, sixty nine kilo M fours. We've got Gail Williams and. Mm-hmm you know, reigning world champion in the M4s unopposed. So knock on wood, pray to the and gods. We got another national championship on our hands there. Yep. She's got a, she's got a world record deadlift. So it'll be interesting to see if her deadlift at nationals maybe starts to push that number a little bit as she's prepping to go to either, either North Americans or worlds. Yeah. 
So, all right, that's session one. Um, that's everything we've got in session one. There's some good storylines in there. You know, Shelly Stetner for sure is, is a superstar um, that will be lifting this class. We've already talked about some of the other battles that are happening. So, um, and then, you know, we got Susie Gary. So there's a lot. We're starting off with a bang for sure in this in this first session one. Is there anything uh, in particular you guys are looking forward to in this session one before we move on to session two? Anything else you guys want to highlight? Otherwise, we'll keep it moving here. Nope. All right. So session two, we've got the men, we've got the 53 kilo through the 66 kilo M1 through M4s, and we don't have a 53 kilo lifter. So I wonder why that is. We don't have the super lightweight classes. What do you think, Melissa? Right. Those are only juniors. So. Oh, what the hell? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> of course. Those are only juniors. That uh, Why would it make sense to add them back in and for masters? <laughs> so, Okay. I was wondering about that. So anyway, but, um, so in the 59 kilo, we only have one 59 kilo lifter M4 Sam Feltz, knock on wood, going to be a national champion. Also already a world champion in the M4s helping team USA, hopefully this year to secure the dub on the M4s against all the other countries. Um, anything you want to say about Sam Feltz, Melissa, I think you got the best spreadsheet. So I, <laughs> Um, unfortunately, I, you know, I, I don't know Sam well. Um, we just, we weight classes, like we're never lifting at the same time. Um, I know he has a world record bench press and I, I think it's, we'll see what we get out of that at, at nationals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. All right. So we'll keep it moving then. Um, next up, um, we got the 66 kilo M ones and here we got Sean Queller and why you tan. And uh, I know why you was NAPF, um, super sweet guy. He's probably getting stronger and stronger. But I think this Sean Queller is also really strong and is a really formidable mm -hmm. opponent. So, yeah, Melissa, let's go to you. So, again, um, more lifters that I don't really know very well. Um, Sean does have the better total. Um, with a lot of these lower weight classes, I think it really does come down to how well does the cut go. Um, especially if they're having to cut into that weight class. So um, I, I, based on the totals, I think it's probably going to go to Sam, but I do think it's going to be close. And I think, think it'll be an interesting battle. If nothing else, I know why you is very seasoned, very good lifter, mm -hmm. very smart as well. So he'll make lifts. Um, all right. Anything else you want to want to say in this weight class? Okay. Otherwise 66 kilo M twos. We got Rick Brink and Brian Mott. So who wants to say anything on this one? Amy, you want to go to you first this time? I, you know, Melissa's spreadsheet's better. I don't have their totals in front of me. Um, so <laughs> Looks like so I don't know. Brink. Yeah. Yeah, Rick, Rick Brink. He's running away with this one, 522. So okay. Yeah. Sorry, uh, his best that. nominated total is, is much higher. Now, I will say it looks like he may have to do – there are some lifters that, that as we went through this, they don't have totals. And I don't know whether it's because um, open powerlifting and the powerlifting America database have not been updated. So um, I do also know there's a last, last chance qualifier meet that's happening Thursday night. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, it, is that something he has to do before he goes and lifts? Um, it shouldn't have any impact on it, but we just don't know. And I think it's also interesting, like as these lifters come over from other federations, because that is the thing that's happening, um, judging and standards can vary a little bit. Yeah. So does yeah. this have an impact on what their overall total is? For sure. If they're used to 24 hour weigh-ins or using a deadlift bar or something like that. Um, definitely. Right. I mean, 24 hour weigh-ins, like you're basically in a totally different weight class. Right. Um, so. Yeah. The, and the bench rule for a lot of people, well, I mean, for all of us, it's new, but it may be even newer than that. <laughs> yeah. So, right. For sure. Okay. So let's keep pushing here. We got the 66 kilo M threes. We got George Kern and Ronald Greenberg. So Melissa, we'll just go to you first every time. Yeah. Well, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I could not find a total for Ronald Greenberg. I think maybe I found him on open powerlifting. And if I did, he's been lifting since the late, late eighties. Um, but he, if it's him, he has had a rather long layoff. So um, I feel like he is a complete unknown and he could either come in and do really, really amazing things and just shock everybody. Um, 
but we don't we don't have any way to know about that right now. So without that total, um, I kind of have to go with George because um, he's kind of a known quantity. But last year he was a 74. So we're going to have to see how the cut treats him. OK, nice insight there. Let's see. It's cutting down a weight class trying to do the EV Corrigan. Um, all right. Anyone have any more comments on that one? Otherwise, we got what looks to be a superstar here. Um, 66 kilo M4 Manuel Rodriguez. So I saw Melissa's note on this one and it was inappropriate. It, it is inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not putting my notes up. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what is so special about this guy? So, so based on what I'm finding, his nominated total is 445 kilos as a 66 M4. So either I've 100% got the wrong lifter or I don't know what he's doing, but I want to talk to him about it. Yeah, this is a storyline that we need to follow. This is a person's name we need to write down and definitely uh, check out and see what's going on uh, because this would be cool. And and this is his first time coming over for Poverty in America, right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. so. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So there we go. That is session two. Any uh, final thoughts on session two? We got the men. We got the lightweight men. Um, all the way up to 66 kilo. It's mostly all 66 kilos and 159. So um, any comments, Any uh, anything else there? All right. So let's keep it moving then. Next up, we got the session three. So this is the final session of day one. This will be Friday, uh, June 2nd. And we've got the women. We've got 76 kilos through 84 plus M1 through M4s. So this is where... We're starting out with a bang here um, with, we've got in the M2s, so 76 kilo. Whoops, I'm sorry. We want to start with M1s. Here we go. I'm sorry. Let me get my M1s sorted here. We got in the M1s, we've got Amy Hutchinson, Alexa Spursky, Angela Stone, Courtney Costrino, Claire Crawford, Lindsay Rubel, and Sarah Rodick. Nope, sorry, Sarah's a 84. Lindsay Rubel was the last one of those 76 M1s. All right, so we got a pretty sizable amount of depth here in this weight class. Who wants to take this one? I'll take it. Oh, uh, did you want to take it, Melissa? Or? No, I was going to say we should make Amy do it, but that's mean. <laughs> Amy, who are you picking? <laughs> I'm, picking uh, I'm picking me for this one. Come on now. <laughs> okay, okay. She's confident. No, I'm not, but okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> She's putting on a brave face. It'll, it'll be a battle. I mean, y'all can talk about it, but I'll I'll yeah. chime in because obviously I'm very well versed on this weight class. All right. Go ahead, Julia. Go ahead, Julia. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think this is gonna be one of the most exciting battles of the uh masters uh nationals. Um and basically we have a four-way battle uh between Lindsay Rubel, Alexis Bursky, if I'm pronouncing that right, um, Amy Hutchinson, of course, and um, Courtney Castrina. And, you know, three out of these four lifters come in with over 400 kilos total and right around 400, you know, um, in the low, in the low 400. So I think it's really anyone's game. Um, Alexa, uh, she's coming over from CPU and 416 so you know that puts her in front but um we don't really know um that much um she's very close to m2 you know so obviously um as you age out of m1 uh, you know you, you might not be seeing the same strength gains as some of the other competitors so it should be interesting um i know amy's training has been going really well right amy it has um, been <laughs> has it though i don't know She's been saying things. I don't post. I don't post. She's been saying things on Instagram, like uh, missed a squat recently, like which you never miss. You never miss a squat. I don't know. I never miss a squat, and I missed a squat the other day, man. You don't know. You don't but know. But then you you made a bench, and you when you normally don't, right? So I don't I feel know, like it's a peak until you miss a couple. Maybe it's, it's a trade off. Who's gonna get mad at me? Listen, <laughs> all I like. All I got to say is I'm hitting depth, you know, and, and this is new for me. So we're like, mm -hmm, we're, mm -hmm. we're doing good. Um, yeah. I mean, it's going to, it's going to be a close one. I obviously am, um, nervous, but excited. I mean, I, I don't typically compete this close to other 
people. Um, but, you know, Lindsay was at Open Nationals and she dropped a little bit on her total. And so the question is going to be whether or not she's been able to clean that up since nationals, because those are kind of two close nationals altogether. Um, you know, Alexa is very seasoned, has been around the world literally competing. And um, and I expect her to be a very calm and ready competitor. Um, and then Courtney's bench just has blown up. And so um, I expect Courtney to have the strongest bench of the day out of our um out of our weight class so it'll be it'll be exciting for everyone watching uh i i don't know how i feel about it yet but <laughs> it'll be exciting for everyone else oh yeah we'll be looking forward to this one for sure um melissa you want to add anything on to this one um I don't know that I really have anything else to add. Um, this is Alexa's first year with us, but like the CPU is is notorious for their long pauses on the bench. So she should, to Amy's point, she should come in well prepared and pretty comfortable doing this. Um, Go ahead, Julia, you have something? Yeah, so I, I believe uh, Lindsay is coached by Meg Scanlon. At least I think she was at National. Yeah, so, you know, um, like you said, there, there is definitely some, you know, technique issues that might need to be cleaned up, but I think she's in pretty good hands for that. Um, uh, yeah. Um, for, are we doing picks? Oh, Melissa and Julia. <laughs> we already know who Amy's picking. I mean, yeah. And, and, I feel like I need to yeah. leave. <laughs> turn your screen. I mean, turn, mute, mute everything. Mute your computer. No, <laughs> Y'all are going to have to answer to Bill when he gets mad at me for being on my own preview show. <laughs> it's all right. I mean, Alexa does Alexa does have a big total, right? Like that is that is a fact. Um, but I do I guess yeah, and I hate doing this when we're we're this close because really, really we are close enough that it could could be anybody's day. Um and I feel even though like I met Alexa at Worlds, um I feel like I, I have to go with Amy out of loyalty. Um, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I'll pay I'll I'll pay you later. It's good. <laughs> All right, <Thanks>. Julia. <laughs> yeah, so um I think this is is really gonna um come down to the wire here um and you know honestly i i can't i i can't know who's gonna win um i think it's gonna be really close um i know amy's training has been going well so that's that's something that that i can can bank on here and um yeah uh, i see two kilo in the notes two kilo uh bench pr recently. so you know yeah. what I don't want to make this podcast sound like a biased podcast, but I think I'm going to go with Amy just because I know, I know her training's been going well and she's close enough that she can put pressure. She, she can apply a lot of pressure mm -hmm. here. So I think that um, she's a very good chance. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm just going to weigh in a little bit. I'm not going to say much, but um, if you're looking at Alexa's history, she does miss her third deadlift a lot is what it just a, a mm -hmm. brief glance over there. She missed her third deadlift a lot. So if it's tight and it comes down to it, if you can put pressure, Amy, then there's a chance she's going to miss that. Um, the other thing, yeah, you, I had, a, you know, Amy hit 82 kilos on bench recently, and that's two kilos ab above her comp max at a lower body weight um, than she did that comp max. And so I think it's always a good sign when your bench is holding on and you're, you're, you're still PR on your bench, even when you're coming down as you're cutting, coming into the comp. So that's a really good sign that your strength will still be there. Um, on the other hand though, Alexa is moving up a weight class. And so she can fully eat into this weight, weight class. And usually you move up a weight class, you know, bench is going to go up. Squat's going to probably go up. Um, but again, it'll come down some, oftentimes deadlifts don't. And it, if it comes down to that third deadlift, that might be the ace and up your sleeve for that one. Um, and Alexa doesn't and, post very much, but you know, she seems to be doing okay from her post. Yeah. She has, she's pretty strategic with not posting is what it seems like. So, yeah. So that's my, and I think from, sense. from the handler perspective to you, I mean, cause I obviously have looked every direction when I made the decision to cut down. Um, you know, Alexa does have the advantage of having the biggest deadlift. So yeah. 
I think it will be hers to win um, or lose, as it were. I think it will come down to her deadlift. It's just going to be a question of if she's she hits that last deadlift or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she has like a, just a brief glance has missed one, two, three, four of her last deadlifts in a row, or I guess that one is in there twice. So three, um, so has the biggest deadlift, but could give it away if she doesn't make her third deadlift. So let's see, that's, that's going to be a really exciting one. And then you have, uh, Lindsay just kind of like someone's trying to pull for the win and misses or something like that. She's going to slide in there take a silver medal from someone, uh, possibly snag that, that spot on the NAPF team or, who knows if maybe you two push each other too much, both go over and Lindsay's the last one standing takes the gold medal. So this is a super exciting uh, weight class for sure. I'll be excited to watch this one. And I do want to mention in fairness to, sorry, I I will stop after this. Lindsay is very, very, Lindsay's very, very strong. She has incredible strength. She's got a very strong squat. Her only issue at nationals was technicalities. And so the question mark with her is going to be, is that enough time to clean up those technicalities, the heaving on the bench, the not hitting depth on squat and the, um, the hitching on the hitching ramping on deadlift. If it's been enough time for her to clean it up, she, she probably has a four thirty total in her. Um, oh. it's just, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's strong. It's just a matter of, she's got to do it on the platform clean with, with the white lights. Um, so it really, it seriously is going to come down to who's going to have the best day. Uh, next week or this week, this Friday. So, yeah, so this soon. Friday. <laughs> so soon. Yeah, I think we just convinced ourselves this is going to be the biggest battle. Uh, I mean, wow. Like after we talked it out for a minute there, I'm like really looking forward to seeing 60, 76 kilo M1s um, looks really stacked and like it's going to be a great battle. A lot of, and it might come down to, you know, your game day coaching and who puts the right numbers in, who who makes lifts and who doesn't, you know, so. Mm-hmm. And who is your handler, Amy? <laughs> The one and only Bill McCarthy. Oh shit. I mean, <laughs> I don't know who these other ladies got, but it's hard to be better than the wizard, you know. Listen, uh, he McCarthy. wants to have our he wants to have our preemie phone call. And let me I'll just tell you right now how it's gonna go. Bill, whatever you want to do. Bye. <laughs> like yeah. it's not, it's up to him. The other thing I, I we kind of hinted at it would just say uh, Alexa is almost aging into M2s, and you are just mm-hmm. aging into M1s. So, I mean, you know, there's that advantage as well. We're looking at her best totals. They, they have kind of tapered off a little bit is what it looks like. So, mm-hmm. all right. All right. I think we just totally nailed that one. So that's our <laughs> best one so far. 76 kilo M ones, make sure you mark your calendar. This will be session. What are we on? <laughs> session three. Session three. Yeah. Session, session three. three. So this is prime time. This is, this is right. perfect. They got the spotlight on them. Um, and so, okay, let's keep it moving. 76 kilo M twos. Uh, aforementioned Joa Ionata and Cynthia line. So what do we have going on in this weight class? Melissa, are you ready with this one? I, I, yeah. So prior to the deadline for changing weight classes, there was a lot more competition in the M2s and a whole bunch of people looks like fled to the 84s. Um, I don't, I don't want to say why they went. Maybe it's the cut. Maybe it's the really late weigh-ins because 2 PM weigh-ins are just rude. Um, or maybe it is Joa's massive, massive total. Um, and, and we've been giving her a hard time about that, about how she's made the other lifters and she scared them all away, uh, pretty much since the deadline passed. So, um, yeah. Joa is unfortunately, sorry, Cindy, well ahead of Cindy, uh, Cindy, by the way, is also one of your athlete representatives. So, you know, we def- definitely wish her a good meet. She does a lot of stuff for the organization. Um, but Joa finished second at worlds last, last year behind Kimberly Walford. Yeah. And I don't really know what, what else you can do when you have to take on Kimberly Walford. Uh, she, she did get a world record bench. Um, and yeah, she's, she's looking forward to the meet and I think she's going to do well. And I mean, just to reiterate too, like she was going through a lot of stuff um, going into last worlds time. last year, personal things. And um, her prep was derailed in, in a lot of ways because of that. And so the fact that she was able to put up a world record bench with that, that prep, and then now has, you know, six months or whatever. It's been eight months since then to really work hard and, and, you know, build momentum. She should be ready to put up something huge. I'm excited to see her. Um, anything else you want to add on there or else? Uh, yeah. I mean, oh. I, I think also we should say, um, Cynthia with a, a 377.5 entry total. Um, that's, that's a really solid entry total. It's it is. Just, yeah. Um, it's just that, you know, Joe is coming in here with a, a 451, which is, you know, crazy. Yeah. yeah. 
She's yeah. a juggernaut. It is one of the hard things about being a master, right? Like you're good, you're good. And then one of these these kids shows up and ruins your day and they're like seven or eight years younger than you. And it's just because, I mean, honestly, and, and we're seeing it, people are aging out of the open. They're staying with lifting longer. Um, and we're going to continue to see these numbers go up in the master's categories. Definitely. Um, definitely. As the sport grows in depth, it, it's going to affect all categories from top to bottom mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, if you saw the, the juniors and sub juniors preview show, I mean, the future is super bright here. I mean, for powerlifting, we're getting more and more talent into the sport every day. All right. 76 kilo M fours. We got a national champion on our hands. Lenore, Lenore Gelb. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Knock on wood. Don't bomb out. And you punch your ticket to Mongolia, or you'll have your pick if you want to go to Cayman Islands. All right. That's it. We did not have an M three in the 76s uh by my notes here so interesting we got a little gap there so anyone out there is listening and you're an m3 and you want to go to worlds and you can get to 76 then let's do it all right next up we have so now we're moving on to the 84s and this weight class as you mentioned suddenly is loaded Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the more deep ones, which is interesting because usually 84s, usually 76, 69, 63, these are the more stacked weight classes. I mean, in terms of just total number of people, but it's interesting. Yeah. 84. There's a lot here. So we got Mm -hmm. Sarah Rodick, Rachel Deal, Jackie Mercer, Siri Hoogan, and Chereni Woodard. I'm sorry if I butchered that last one. Woodard. Yes. All right. So those are the M4, 84 kilos. What's your take on these? We got some depth here. We do. So I think, and I'm going to apologize if I mispronounce anybody's name, I'm sorry. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> uh, so Shreni, Shreni uh, has only done one, one meet with powerlifting America. It looks like from, from what's on um, open powerlifting her, she got up to kind of a rough go on squats. Um, so it will be interesting to see what happens in a national level meet um, and how that goes for her. If, if it's smoother going, I think she's going to put up a very big total. Um, for right now, based on the nominated totals, I don't want to. I don't want to say she's she's a lot because I really do think it's going to depend on on how she looks on the day. Um, Siri has a ton of experience, so and she's close. She's she's 15 kilos back. So um, if if things technique wise do not go Shreni's way, I think the Siri is going to be right in there to to swoop in and take it. Um, Jackie and Sarah are very close in total. Um, they may also get in there and, and get on the podium and spoil somebody's day as well. For sure. For sure. Yeah. There's a lot of talent here. Um, so you're going to pick Siri. Is that right? I think I am. All right. And then, um, second place you got Shereni. Is that how you say it? How you're saying it? I, I, that's how I'm saying it. I don't know if it's Shereni. right. Okay. Let's yeah. do that. Okay. All right, Trini, and, we're and sorry. Really, and if I'm, we'll if I'm wrong, Trini's going to put in a massive, massive total that we're all going to want to see. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. I'm a, oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm always excited to see when uh, somebody comes over from equipped. Um, I think that sometimes, you know, that, so with uh, Sarah Rodak, it looks like she has an older total of 377.5, but she has been um, competing equipped and her total is a little over 500. I think when somebody goes equipped and they're used to handling heavier weights um, on a pretty frequent basis, it can do a lot for their raw total. Um, and so I'm really excited to see uh, where she comes in. Um, you know, it, it could also um, negatively affect her, but I think um, that will be that will be a very interesting one. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, that battle but for um, that last podium spot should be, should be pretty interesting as well. Um, yeah. Ju- Go ahead, uh, Julia, I I am glad you brought that up because I'd forgotten. I do have a note on this on um, Sarah. Sarah's got a huge equip total that her last raw meet this is really interesting to me her last raw meet she bombed out on bench which as an equipped lifter to bomb out raw on bench is very interesting to me intriguing to me um and so I don't think that we have a total here that's representative of her raw strength because of that bomb out and 
I, I wouldn't be surprised if she's in the mix with mm-hmm. that equipped total. Um, I do think from what I've seen now, Cherney, Cherney is Cherney. However, um, we apologize to you for not checking <laughs> on this beforehand. Um, I, you know, I messaged Melissa earlier. She posted a picture of a 440 deadlift that she recently hit. Um, you know, when we're going back to the advantage that you have with having a big deadlift and deadlifting last, I, I, I'm going to still lean to, towards her, but I also have a question mark on Sarah and Siri too. I think that they mm-hmm. could get in there and, um, either Siri with her experience or Sarah with her, her strength from equipped. I think either one of them could push her, um, Cherney, you know, again, Melissa talked about her squat the video that I saw of her squat from her last meet, I couldn't tell about whether it was depth or not, but um, I think it may have been a, a command issue, but all of her lifts were very fast. She definitely has more in the tank. Um, being a newer lifter, going to nationals, having to travel, we know all these factors factor in, and we don't know how she'll handle that because she hasn't done a national meet before, but so there's a little bit of a question mark there, but I still think her just raw strength will, will probably see it through. Wow. Yeah. This is, you guys are convincing me. This is also, this is another one of these battles that could go either way. Um, such a great storyline here too, with someone, you know, this, this nominated total from Sarah Rodock of 377.5 already has her in the mix. But when you consider that such an old total and she's totaling way more equipped, and coming over, but then does such an equipped thing and bombs out on bench, um, which is so, so equipped lifting. I mean, it's interesting to see how, how that's going to translate. And then waiting right there with damn near similar, very similar total is Jackie Mercer. Um, right. and, and that total also is over a year old and I know she's been working and I know that, um, she does a lot. I mean, she's a national ref. She's hosting meets out there in Portland. Um, so she does a lot of stuff. Hopefully they won't be having her doing any kind of refing or doing anything beforehand so she can show her full strength, what she's built up over this over a year since she's competed last. So, um, is that right? Yeah. She, she, yeah, she is not refing beforehand. Yeah. Okay, great. So that's exciting. Um, so who knows where she could be as well. Uh, so we're right in the mix. This is really kind of a four-way battle here. Mm-hmm. Very cool. All right. Anything else? Oh, so making final picks, Amy and Julia, who are y'all picking? Because Melissa already picked Siri. Amy, you go first. I'm going to go with Cherney. I think her raw strength is going to win out. Okay. She does have the biggest. Julia made a face as (laughs) Julia made a face as soon as I said that. (laughs) She does have a 15 kilo lead on best total coming into this. That's 15 kilos is a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Julia. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm inclined to, to honestly, this is going to be way out there, but I'm, I'm inclined to pick Sarah just because I, I think that we might be underestimating her to a large degree. But, you know, I do think I, I have to go with uh, Cherney, actually, because at the end of the day, like a 440 deadlift is wild, you know, like that's, that's massive. Um, yeah. And that's so, yeah. I'll go with Cherney. I'll go with, yeah, I'll go with Cherney and we'll see, we'll see what happens for second and third. Wow. Julia totally ruined it. She, we were going to have three different picks from these I, three I, geniuses. I, um, and then she backed out last second. She got cold feet. Um, so, <laughs> but, um, but all right, well, I think you convinced me. <laughs> What's that? Oh no, it's, it's just, it's hard to argue with a 200 kilo deadlift, you know? It definitely is. It definitely mm-hmm. is hard to argue and, and a 15 kilo lead on, on total coming in, but, um, all right. So that's definitely going to be a full one to watch. We've picked, you know, almost picked three different people, um, to win that one. So that definitely means it's close. All right, let's move on. Is there anything else you want to say about that class? All right. 84 M twos. We got Brenda Arnold, Dr. Michael Harris, Stephanie Carpenter and Lockveer Sodi Gosal. So who wants to take this one? Melissa, we'll go to you first, as always. All right. Uh, so uh, Lockbeer, I think, is probably in a really good position to win it. So that 187 and a half is not indicative of what she, that, that she's, uh, her nominee total, is not indicative of what she's capable of. Um, oh. She has, the, clearly she did a meet as a qualifier. 
um, because on open powerlifting, she has totals in the low 400s. So, um, and she was originally listed as, listed as a 76. So that means she's not cutting weight for this. So I do think that we're going to see a big total from her that I, that should go over 400 pounds. Um, so, kilos. yeah. Um, kilos, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to cheat anybody because that's a big difference. She will definitely go over 400 pounds. I will put yeah. money on that one. But <laughs> About a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. But I think Stephanie will probably also still have a very good meet. Right. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Finish up your pick then, Melissa. No, I, so I do think it's going to be Lockyer, but I think I think Stephanie will push her, and I think that will make it interesting to see how it goes. All right. And does Lockyer go by Lucky? Is that her nickname? I, I've Is heard that, that but I don't. I don't want to accidentally like call somebody by the wrong name because oh, I, I have no. I actually haven't met her. Our Latin America podcast is all about nicknames. It's like one of our main <laughs> themes. But um, all right, Amy, go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the same. Um, I. Melissa, I, I couldn't remember that too, but I, I do remember I've seen her name a lot mm -hmm. and been scared of her a lot because she's been <laughs> 76 before. Um, and so I, I do, I do think she's got the season and the experience to be able to win it, but I think Stephanie could push her. So yeah. I think it'll be a, a close battle, but I do think, yeah, I would go with all here on this one too. All right. And Julia. So in, in my notes, I have that Stephanie um, has totaled 420 um, and Lockbeer has, I don't, I don't know if that's correct. Um, and then Lockbeer has, has totaled um, 415 um, and both at, um, well, Lockbeer, I guess, at 80 in the, as a light 84 and Stephanie is 76. So this is going to yeah. be a close this is going to be a very, very close one. And um, maybe I'll go with Stephanie just to, to mix it up a little bit. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't tell you. I think this is going to be a real battle. I think Stephanie probably has, um, if she's been consistently coming in lighter, she has a little more leeway. Although, you know, making weight is not going to be an issue for either of them. But if it does, if they do tie and it comes down to body weight, um, I think she'll win because she'll be lighter. Um, so that's a possibility as well. Um, so yeah, my pick Stephanie. So you are picking Stephanie. All right, then. Uh, Stephanie Carpenter, she's based out here where I am in Idaho, Boise area. Um, and we used to train at the same gym and she's got a really good coach and um, who's a local coach here. And her, her Instagram handle is deadlift grandma, um, deadlifting grandma or something like that. And so, um, she's super cool, super hard worker. I believe she just aged into M2s mm. recently. Am mm. I right? Yeah. I and think so. Was an M1 before, um, whenever I used to train with her. And I do remember that she used to have pretty difficult time with cuts, um, going into meets, um, cutting down to at the time, I think the weight classes were different, um, on the women's side. So it might not have been 76. It would have been, what was it? 72. 72. 72. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, the fact that she has, can, can be a full on 84 now, uh, as well, as well as like we said, she initially signed up as a 76. Now she's 84. Same thing with lock fear. That's, I think that bodes really well for Stephanie as well. Um, just, just knowing, you know, that I think she's had trouble with cuts in the past. So her totals are probably not representative of what she would do if she's eating into a meat. So that would be my take, but I'm looking forward to that one too. I haven't seen Stephanie in a while, so it'll be really cool to reunite and powerlifting America nationals um, after all those years. So, all right, let's move on. If there's anything else you want to say about the M2s. Okay. 84 kilo M3s. We've got a national champion, Barbara Bodine. Congratulations and knock on wood. Don't bomb out, please. And you'll be punching your ticket. You'll have your choice of Mongolia or the Cayman Islands. So anyone want to say anything about Barbara? Um, I, just think, I just think you should make a shirt that says congratulations and don't bomb out. <laughs> you know, if, if anybody does bomb out now, it's because you jinx them. Like you understand exactly. that, right? This You are oh, now no. solely responsible for the performance <laughs> of all of these people going uncontested. Oh, I know. Oh, I, I'll take full credit as well if they win. 
<laughs> the buck stops with me. I, I either get all the credit for the gold medal they come back with worlds, or I take all the shame for making them bomb out and we lost a, a valued member of the Poverty in America national team. Mm -hmm. It all is on my shoulders. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Looks like my spreadsheet here is a little messed up. So we're going to move into 84 plus. And we've got some studs in this one for sure. I, I know a couple off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. So we've got in the 84 kilo, 84 plus M1s. We got Melissa Copeland, Sherry Jones, Rebecca Rutkowski, and Aaron Hall. So Melissa, who do you have to win this one? <laughs> I mean, it's a little self-serving, but I like my odds. Yeah, I saw your notes. <laughs> you said you like your odds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well so, you know what honestly if i can if i can get a squad in without like completely losing it you know then i i think we're going to be okay but um i'm i'm excited too to see like last year i went completely unopposed i'm excited to actually see that there are other and, and not just the m1s but that there are so many other supers um because it was yeah. lonely out on that platform last year so thank you all for coming and lifting with us <laughs> yeah for sure it was pretty much just like you and lily last year yeah, um, yeah, and uh, right. and Mahalia. Yeah, exactly. Uh, sub yeah. junior. Sub junior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So. That's right. I remember that because um, I was. Yeah, and actually, Vicky was with us as well. Okay, Vicky Brackett yeah. is in three. Yep. yep. But yeah, so so it was a really really small group. So, um, but yeah. All right, Amy. Who are you picking? Let me let me see. Your I should analysis. pick. I don't know. Um, no, I obviously will pick Melissa. Um, again, I'm excited to see her squat. The, the thing is she could squat well below what she's capable of and still have a solid total, um, which I'm jealous of, uh, if we're oh. honest about it. Um, but you know, I, I think there are other, uh, stories in this, uh, in this weight class in terms of, um, Rebecca is really close again to knocking on that 400 total. So I would mm -hmm. love to see her hit that 400 total. Um, Aaron Hall had, or not Aaron, sorry, Sherry Jones has had a 400 total in the past and her most recent was one, um, under that. So it, it would be cool to see a couple of 400 totals in your weight class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a nice battle there for second place mm -hmm. uh, for sure. The, it looks like the battle in this weight class is definitely going to be for that silver medal. Julia, do you have anything you want to add to this one? Yeah, I was going to say, um, Mel missed the opportunity to say, um, I can't like get the, the Heather Connor uh, reference in there and say, I can't wait to see who finishes second because it's actually going to be maybe a pretty good battle, I think. It's too nice. Uh, yeah. Go I don't want to steal Heather's, Heather's words. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Melissa, so tell us, because so first of all, we got an awesome interview. Shout out PA podcast with the three of these and going on uh, about all of Melissa's accolades and everything that you've done, but coming out of worlds where you had that, I was watching it and I, I like actually turned it off. Cause I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, I just, I was scared that you were just not going to be able to finish. And I would just like, I hate seeing people get injured on a platform like that. It was it. And I remember I was like on a zoom call with someone and I was like, I just saw like a really gruesome injury. And then much to my surprise, you came out when six for six after that and like almost still, came, I mean, you were challenged, you put pressure on your competitor, you know, to, for the gold medal. Um, but so going into this now, you know, how is your squat feeling? Uh, I mean, so it feels fine. Um, but it also felt fine going into worlds. Like we had zero indication that anything was wrong until it went wrong. And I think that's going to be the hardest thing for me to kind of shake off is the little bit of catastrophizing that it will feel good and somehow end end terribly. Right? Like that's, yeah. that's, that's kind of a tough thing to to shake off. So, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I, I don't really have a choice, right? I either I either hang up my shoes and stop competing, or we we figure out how to make this happen. So, all right. So it's more of just a mental barrier, mm -hmm. and so it's all about just going out there, getting an opener, uh, you know, and then just building from there, right? Yep. And do you have any kind of sites? We're going to talk about the 84 plus M2s where we have another superstar like yourself with a total that is not far off. 
So are you looking, I mean, if, if, if like you get that op squad opener and I see you walking off and you're talking, you're coached by Bill, are you going to be handled by Bill? I'm not actually. So my coach okay. is actually going to make it out this time. I'm coached by Chris Aiden. Okay. That's right. Okay. So mm -hmm. you're going to be talking to Chris, you hit that opener and it feels good. Are you going to be like, let's go, let's go and try and beat Pat Johnson. Uh, I, so I, huh. she's a lot lighter than me and that's a problem. Um, yeah. so I, Honestly, at this point, and, and I always kind of like best lifters a little weird. Like it's cool when yeah. you get it, but like, uh, um, and I kind of, I'm kind of resigned to the fact that supers don't get best lifter. Like I feel like last yeah. year was a bit of a fluke. Um, so I think for me, it really is going to, going to be seeing if we can rack up some American records, um, see if we can get near the world record squat, even though I'm pretty sure that thing is cursed, um, and, and see how that goes. So once you break that curse on squat, then it's on for mm -hmm. Pat Johnson. That's what you're saying. So we're going to tell, she... tell her that you're coming for her and she better step it up. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know that you want to encourage her. I don't think I need that kind of pressure. You're going to make her okay. angry and she's going to come out and like, just embarrass me. <laughs> we, need, we need a UFC style press conference right beforehand where you two are facing each other down, but it will have to happen after squat after, you know, then you'll yeah. have your game face on. I, this is my game face. This is as good as it gets. All right. I'm not that angry. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amy and Julia, you guys have anything you want to add? No, mm -mm. I take that no. silence as a no. All right, <laughs> let's move it. Um, all right. We're moving on to 84 plus M twos. We got Candace Ovid, Stacia Profrock, Lillian Jackson, and Patricia Johnson. So we got the reigning world champ, Lillian Jackson, Lily bot girl on Instagram. She's amazing. She's awesome. She brought back gold medals for team USA, helped team USA win team points, stuff like this. And then we got the newcomer, Pat Johnson, new to PA. That is not a newcomer in the sport. So Melissa, let's go with your take first on this one. So we do have a pretty wide spread here, right? So yeah. there's 60 to 70 kilos between all of the lifters. Um, I really look, Lillian was my rate at world. She's one of my favorite super heavyweights. I really think Patricia might be too much for her. Um, and it, it, it hurts me to say that. Like, I don't even want to yeah. say that out loud. Um, but I, I do think that's, that's kind of where we are. Um, Stasha is actually a local lifter. Um, so I've wrapped her in meets. Um, she's super excited. And I think that she's got a really, really solid chance of coming in third. Um, so I think, I think it's going to be a good day for everybody. Yeah. It looks like her and uh, Candice, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a pretty big gap between everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, so it looks like, um, Pat will have the, uh, you know, have her choice and then maybe Lily will be going to Cayman Islands. That sounds so bad. I won't feel too bad yeah. if she goes to Cayman Islands instead of Mongolia, but you're right. It does break my heart. I mean, we, we have these bond with the teams that we had last year, you know, and we want to see mm -hmm. them come back, but we're attracting so much more talent coming over that it's like this, this kind of stuff is going to happen. Yeah. So, all right. Um, Amy, Anything you want to add? Yeah. I mean, I think the spread's pretty obvious there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. There's not much else. There's not much else that you can say because it's even between first, second, second and third, third and fourth, there's a pretty big spread. So yeah. I think that this one's one that, you know, and, and as someone who is competing, compete, like who has close competitors, it's not the worst thing to go to nationals and have fun and see what you can total, you know, yeah. like it, it, it's um, that pressure being off is not a bad thing. And, and so it could be fun to see people who really are pushing, able to push their PRs because they're not mm -hmm. trying to gamify um, what it looks like to compete. So that could be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. This could be PR filled, a PR filled session here for sure with everyone kind of being able to just do their own thing. Julia, is there anything else that you want to add? No, I mean, um, I've met Pat Johnson. She's really nice. Um, I've trained in her gym a couple of times. Um, she, you know, she works very, very hard. Um, and she has a monster deadlift. So that's going to be really interesting to see. I think her deadlift and Lillian's uh, bench uh, should be um, really, really fun to watch just and see what they hit. And, you know, 495 is a monster ice tree total too. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just, you know, when you're up against 
basically 560, you know, 557. That's, you know, kind of out of this world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and also, um, she is a doctor. So, and she, in her moniker is Dr. J, you know, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And she's done bodybuilding. I mean, so it's, she's just, she's yeah. going to put on a show. So I think that's yeah. going to be super fun to watch. It's always fun to watch her walk out there and everyone realize she's a super because she absolutely does not look like one. Yeah. She must be tall. She's, she's tall, but she's also just in, well, last time I saw her, uh, she's just incredibly jacked. Yeah. Right. You just, so you just assume that she's a lighter weight class. Mm -hmm. Exciting. I'm excited to meet her. Um, I was so pumped. Um, like she DM'd me asking about how to get, you know, transferred over and all this stuff. And I was just like, we got one here, another superstar. <laughs> right. Um, and it'll be fun to see like, once you get your squad in and we can kind of see if maybe you guys can push each other a little bit, you both got nothing to lose. Might as well, you know, put on a show for the people mm -hmm. and round out the end of that stacked primetime session with a bang um on day one there and then the last person to mention we do have an 84 plus kilo master three vicky bracket and knock on wood she wins you know a uh, national championship she doesn't bomb out goes on and did vicky i can't remember did she win the world title last year yes she, she did she's a world champion she did okay yes reigning world champion so Vicky Brackett. So I think she'll probably be good when she's going on a post. So she add another national title to her resume. All right. That's everything from day one. Okay. Moving on to day two, session one, we've got the men, we've got 74 kilos through 120 plus, and it's a little different on day two. So in session one, we've got the 74s through the 120 pluses, and, but we're only have the M2s through the M4s. And then in session two, we have the same weight class as 74 to 120 plus, but we have just the M1s. So something uh, somewhat of a prime time session there. I know we also have the sub juniors in the morning and the juniors in the second session. So we have some of those star juniors in there. So that second session on day two is, is kind of something of a, a prime time session, kind of similar to what we had there on day one that we just talked about. Um, all right, so let's get right into it. We got the 74 kilo M2s here with Lee Farmer, John Demchok, and Travis Pardue. Melissa, let's go straight to you with the spreadsheet. Okay. So I'm going to have to go with Travis. Uh, looking at their totals, he's about 60 kilos ahead of John. Um, so unless something happens, the cut goes wrong, um, he just has a rough day, I think he's he's pretty safe to win this one. All right. And does anyone want to add anything else to this? Amy, no? All right, then let's move on to the M3s. And 74 kilo M3s, we got Carlos Lewis and Michael Rodriguez. Now, is this the Michael Rodriguez that's currently at Bench Worlds? Yes. Wow. So yeah. this man's so, doing a lot of comps. He is. And that that's where this makes it a little bit interesting, right? So um, Carlos and Michael have the same nominated total from what I could find. Um, but Michael is going to fly literally around the world to get back here for this. Um, and he's done mostly equipped lifting for the last couple of years. So it'll be interesting, kind of the, the same thing with Sarah, like how does that transfer over? Um, how does the travel treat him? I don't know if he, if he normally needs to cut or if he kind of walks around this way. Um, I do think all of those things are going to factor into how his day goes. Um, I feel like I have to pick him again, like loyalty to the athlete committee, um, he is also one of your athlete representatives. So, um, I'm hoping that the travel is kind to him and, and he has a good day. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's an avid fan of the power of Latin America podcast on YouTube. Um, so he's, he's always leaving us com nice comments and stuff on there. So shout out to him. He just competed equipped and in classic, uh, over in South Africa, which just ended yesterday. So, um, he literally has less, you know, exactly a week from the end of the competition till, um, his day of competing in Scottsdale. And he also, he's done this before. I think he did an NAPF last year, um, where he went to, and did both. So, uh, raw and equipped. So he's, he's accustomed to it. At least we know that, um, does Amy or Julia, do either of you want to add anything to this one? Um, well, I have in my notes that he was, I guess when I, uh, looked up his total, he was light for the weight class. Um, so that bodes well in terms of, of like making weight, but yeah, I mean, he basically has uh, completely 
disrupted uh, peak because of being, you know, halfway around the world and doing veg only. Um, I don't think it's enough to to really um, make this a battle, but um, I think it might be something, you know, um, we'll see, we'll see. I, I, I think he, he has like a 50 kilo lead and I, I don't think mm. that's... Does he? Um, Did you find something new? Because I saw the same totals. Oh. Um, there are a lot of Michael Rodriguez in uh, open power thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> It took it took me it did take me a minute to find like all of his history. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I have oh. yeah, I mean I have five five seventy five. Five seventy two. Oh, five twenty. Yeah. I don't have that. If 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 that is true and it's it's a raw total, then then I agree with you one hundred percent. Um Yeah. I, there is there's something like twenty two Michael Rodriguez or something. So <laughs> yeah. well, I, I here um but it's it's uh if, if that's true and he has a uh close to 600 kilo total i don't think that um um a, a cut or even a disrupted peak is really going to be enough to kind of undo a lead like that um, mm -hmm. and i don't even think it's the benching benching we all know it doesn't really affect you that much as far as like tearing wearing you out it's mm -hmm. more the flying to South Africa and having your adrenaline mm -hmm. peaked to compete twice and then getting on another plane and flying back from South Africa. And then he's, I'm seeing he's based in Texas. So he's got a short flight over to Arizona, but um, still that's a lot. That's a lot for anyone mm -hmm. um, to do. And then especially, you know, an M3, that's going to be tough, but I know he's wiry. And I mean, he, he's a feisty guy. He was at bench nationals. I mean, like he's, he's doing so many different things right now. So um, so I'm excited to see he's a competitor, so he's going to fight for it. Um, okay. We have to pause one more second here. Um, because I am, I have to send this code to Joe Capolino. Let me get it to him real quick. And that was such a good name drop. I have to, <laughs> I have to send something to Joe Capolino real quick. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes, I'm sorry. So I, I so tried to get him to uh, do this like yesterday because um, I knew we would be on our thing. So anyway, now I got my looks like notification. I, I was on do not disturb. So that's why that just popped through. But mm. um, let me just tell him real quick. Hopefully that works. All right. Um, and we're back. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> like the Merv Griffin show, uh, which I only know from Seinfeld. <laughs> I, I don't want to date myself, I'm, but I'm a little too young to know about the Merv Griffin show. But all right. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Okay. Moving on to the 74 kilo M4s. We've got another national champion, also former reigning world champion, Dale Garlitz. And congratulations, please don't bomb out. And we'll have another stud on the U.S. national team. Does anyone want to say anything about Dale? So for me, again, this is another M4 lifter who is a lighter, generally lighter uh, lifter. And he's still got a 442 and a half total. And he didn't even start lifting until he was in his 60s. Wow. Wow. So, you know, thing things like this it is all the evidence you need that it is literally never too late. Yeah. I think that's going to be the story of masters nationals. Cause we've got so many stars in here that are inspiring. And so I think uh, I'm excited to meet Dale. Um, I don't remember him from last year as an M4. So, but man, went out and got the, got the dub at worlds. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anyone else, anything else here or should we move on? Let's keep it moving. So next up in the M2s, we've got the 83 kilo um, uh, weight class and we've got Mark, Drobny, Jesus Fragoso, and Jensen Monterey. And um, I'll let y'all take this one. Jesus from Idaho. Representing. Apparently, Idaho has some strong people. We got Stephanie Carpenter. We got Jesus. So yeah. what do we know? Go ahead, Melissa. So Jesus is coming in with a 670 kilo total. Um, that total is his best total in open powerlifting, and it is from a USPA meet. Um, so we will see... Um, 
how that total translates with, you know, the little bit of differences that we have in the rules with the bench depth. Um, I don't know, actually know how, how judging is with USPA. Um, but we'll see if like those small differences make a big difference in his total. He is 65 kilos ahead of both Mark and Jensen. So it's going to have to make a big difference before it really starts to impact him. Um, so I think our real fight there is going to be for Mark and Jensen for second and third. Um, their totals, their nominee totals coming in are virtually the same. Um, Jensen did total 550, but it has been a couple of years since he's done that. Um, so we'll see if we see that number go back up to his previous best or if, if, you know, he really is sitting around the 530, 540 mark right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jensen doesn't post very much. Um, he was on the NAPF team last year. I remember hanging out with him and I want to say he did equipped as well, but maybe he just did raw mm -hmm. only. I don't, I don't recall, but, um, and then, yeah, this Jesus Fergoso, we have to see because USPA, you know, 24 hour weigh in, that's the thing. It's like, does he have a cut or does he not have a cut? Because if he does, then that could be tough to handle, mm -hmm. to deal with that uh, two hour weigh in. And that could basically bring him down a weight class and he would be right there. Um, otherwise it's, going to be a fun battle between Jensen and Mark for second. Um, Amy, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, Melissa, you didn't already mention this, but I'm noticing your notes. He went to junior worlds in 1996. Yes. Jesus did. That's, that's what that's, it looks like from, from open powerlifting. Amazing. That yeah. is crazy. We are. And I, I noticed it going through a lot of the, the masters, like they had a big layoff in the middle, like, like, cause he's not the only one. Um, but like, oh, you know, I went to junior worlds or I, you know, and then I'm going to guess life happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you got a real job, you got married, you had a family and, and this stuff took a back seat. So it's good to see so many people coming back to sports that they, they started with when they were younger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and getting a shot to, you know, go back and be on that world stage again. Mm -hmm. What a storyline, you know, I'll be really excited to meet this, uh, Jesus. Anything else we want to talk about these or let's move on then M3 83 kilos. We've got the reigning world champion, Willie Wong, and we've got Larry Nash. And if, if I'm not mistaken, Willie is not safe here. Um, there Larry's close. Is that right? He's it's close. So there's a, there's a kilo difference. Um, Say that, again. I'm sorry. That I think is... you, you just cut out. Oh, sorry. There's a, a 12 and a half kilo difference between the two of them. So, um, yeah, ha you know, if, if Larry has a really good day, if Willie doesn't have the best day, like this could get very interesting. Um, I don't, I didn't find much on Larry, so I don't, I don't know if he's still making good improvements. Right. So, you know, even with our older lifters, if their overall lifting age is fairly young, um, we do still see PRs into people's sixties and seventies. I mean, we yeah. already talked about that with, uh, um, oh, Shelly. Shelly, thank you. The caffeine yeah. just ran out and I forgot everyone's name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, you never yeah. can tell what we'll see with some of these lifters. Absolutely. I mean, it, it'll be exciting. So um, Willie's training looks good. So he's got, uh, who's his coach again? I always forget his name because he's not a Power of Team America uh, coach. Brazos Valley barbell david wilson oh david wilson yeah david wilson coaching him and i mean i love willie's got like an awesome garage gym so he, he posts his lifts he's not super frequent but um it seems like everything is going great as great as it can go um you know as you know you age up in m3s and stuff i know he was talking about i hope his but he's he said a comment like he hopes his his body just holds on for another couple of weeks so all right do you want to add anything amy or julia um, yeah, I mean, I would just say, you know, 12.5 kilos um, is, is a pretty close, I, I would call that a battle uh, normally, um, you know, I, I would say that's, that would be firmly in the battle territory, but, you know, his training is going really well, and so this might be one of those ones that actually looks a little bit closer than it is. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Willie definitely has that experience, he's got that drive, I know he was so happy to be on the U.S. national team last year. Um, and I know he wants to defend his title and get a shot to go back. So I'm sure he's been working hard, even though I, I don't think he posts like his top sets, but, um, all right, let's keep it moving. Then we got a stacked 83 kilo M four division here. I don't think we have any M four divisions that have three lifters in one weight class. 
but we have it here with John Laflamme, the legend coming over from USVI. And then we've got Russ Marr and we've got the 93 year old Rick De Gregorio, Mr. De Gregorio, as they call him um, out there in Reno, Nevada, where they're based or no, it says he's based in Arizona. So maybe that's where he's, uh, but I know he competed in, in Reno and I know his daughter is out there um, working at American Iron Gym with Tamara Lopes, our treasurer and everything like that. So really cool. You'll definitely, you know, you'll, you'll know when you see him, um, he's, he's a fun one to watch. Um, he's got like the throwback old, uh, socks, you know, like the, for deadlifting on, you know, it, it's amazing. Like he, and he, he gets, he gets like all pumped up in his head. I got to watch him lift out in Reno. Um, I guess at his qualifying meet. And it's just very heartwarming to see this, you know, someone at age 93, it makes you always wonder like, what, what am I, why am I not lifting? <laughs> if he can do it, anyone can do it, you know? So yeah. very inspiring. Um, anything you guys want to say about this one? What do you know about John Laflamme? I mean, John's Never that guy, him. right? Reigning world <laughs> champion, multiple world record holder, you know, yeah. it's, he's, he's got a ton of experience and a ton of consistency and he on, on any day, he's going to be hard to beat. Hasn't no. he been competing since like longer than some of these other masters lifters have even been alive or something crazy like that? I think. I mean, I, f I feel so you may be right, but I feel like if you say that you m might offend him slightly. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, oh. you know, even, even the old people don't like being called old. <laughs> oh, amazing. You know, to be, to be able to be in a sport, that long yeah. and be competitive, but it, you know, um, Oops. like hats off to him. But yeah, I mean, he's he's far and away the favorite here. Um, Five twenty-five uh, kilo total. So yeah. Anyway, so um, I just opened Good Lift, and I'm looking at last year's worlds, and mm -hmm. John Lafon was best lifter. Uh, Dale Garlitz came in second, and I just happened to notice that. Manuel Rodriguez came in third and he was lifting with USVI. So okay. um, go, going back to, you know, talking about our M4 in the 66 kilo weight class that we were, you know, raving about this crazy big total that he has. Um, yeah, he's coming over from USVI. So that's why we didn't have him on the radar. And um, just look at this though. I mean, these are the top three best lifters in the M4s. Mm -hmm. They're all on our squad now. Um, yep. and they're going to go right along with Shelly Stetner, the queen of the M4s who was best lifter last year in the M4s on that, on the women's side. So it's looking like team USA is going to run the M4s big time. So look out to the rest of the world. Um, we got shooters in the M4s big time. All right. <laughs> who, uh, who uh, does anyone want to, Amy, do you want to add anything into this? I'm sorry. We didn't go to you on this one yet. No, just John's a pro. I mean, there's no, there's no doubting that one. So um, I'm excited. I don't know that I've ever seen him compete in person, maybe, and I just don't remember. Um, but he obviously is a big name in, in Masters powerlifting. Yeah, uh, based out of Florida, he was a referee at University Nationals. So that's when I kind of saw and I saw him that he had registered and signed up and everything. And um, I didn't actually get to hang out with him that much, though, at that meet. So I'm looking forward to getting to know him a little bit better. He was very serious, all business uh, on the refing side of things. A little bit scary as a ref. <laughs> I was like doing my photography stuff. I'm trying to stay out of his way because I'm like, oh, that's the legend, John Laflamme. I don't want to make him mad. Maybe he will go back to USVI. Um, but all right, let's keep it moving. We Next up, we got the 93 kilo M2s and we got Chuck Privatera and we got Edward Ruland. So who wants to go on these? Melissa, we'll just keep going straight to you first. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, so, so Edward has far and away a, a much better, uh, total. He's, uh, the best total I could find from was recent total 655, um, compared to Chuck's 490. So I think he's pretty safe mm -hmm. unless something unfortunate happens. Yeah. All right. then. I, I, I do want to say something about Ed. Um, so Ed actually helped me at my last meet at my qualifying meet. Um, okay. His daughter, Marissa, competed at Open uh, nice. Nationals. So Marissa was injured at the meet that we did to qualify. She and I did the same meet in January, which is why Ed was helping, because he was there helping her. Um, and I just think that's such a great storyline. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just think the daddy-daughter thing, and I don't know if 
he's planning on taking the world's invite or if he's planning on taking the NAPF instead. She is going to NAPF. Yeah. Is that correct, Julia? I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that that would just be just such a great story for the two of them to go to Caymans together. But I don't know if that's what he's planning or not. Um, but super nice guy. Um, very helpful to me um, when I didn't have a handler because I was at a random local meet in Florida. So I'm, I'm rooting for him. But, you know, obviously he's got the a, a big total above. Uh, is it Chuck? Yeah, yeah. Chuck. Um, okay. So, yeah, I, I met uh, Ed in Austin. Um, yeah, his daughter competed at Open Nationals in Austin. She's on the NAPF team. Um, I got uh, Ed was at the bar. We had a beer together. Big jolly guy, like mm-hmm. looks just super strong. So I'm excited now to. I've seen him. I've seen him do damage against a few beers, and now we can see what he can do on the platform. Um, so that's cool. And then Chuck, super nice guy, uh, qualified out of one of those comps out in Buffalo, and um, just a, a super super nice guy. I'm happy to see that he get his shot at the bright stage, you know, the bright lights at nationals. So and that he's going to make the trip out. I know he's um, a, f- a crowd favorite for sure as well. He puts on a show. So is there anything else we want to talk about with these? 93 kilo M2s. Okay, then let's go on to 93 kilo M3s. And we have three of them. So these weight classes, we, we have a little bit of depth here in these in these M3s and M4s. We got Steven Carpenter. We got Mario Alfano and Roger Menen. I'm going to mess this one up. Menezes. Menezes. We'll go with that. Menezes. So Roger Menezes. All right, Melissa. Yeah. So this is another one where, where we've got a pretty good spread in the totals. Mm-hmm. Um, Mario is 60 kilos ahead of Roger. Um, and Roger is about 50 kilos ahead of Steven. So I, I do think they'll go in that order. Like I said, unless something comes up and, and we get a result that just is unexpected. Yeah. All right, then. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty straightforward one. Let's keep it pushing here. Let's go uh, to the 105 kilo M2s. And here we got Chris Ingbertson, Kirk Wiley, and Russell McDonald. So, Melissa, we'll kick it over to you again. I know you have some notes on these people. Yeah. So, again, another pretty widespread. Um, Chris does seem to miss a lot of bench attempts, um, particularly in his last two meets. Um, So, he's already ahead and if he manages to actually well manage that that sounds rude uh if he if he's really successful in his attempts then he will just just widen that lead sorry chris <laughs> all right <laughs> chris make your benches brother uh um, i mean that's true for all of us right like don't miss lifts it's it's never good absolutely it's never good um do you want to add anything amy or julia um, yeah i mean so talking about the um you know, parent child thing here. Um, I was going over the, the list of juniors and I remember uh, Engelbertson um, yeah. as, as a name in there. So I think it might be another case of that, which is, you know, always cool to see. Um, and yeah, I, I think that he's, you know, if he makes all his lifts, um, he's probably good for first, even if he doesn't, if he goes eight for nine, probably still good. So that's that's what I got. All right. Nice. Nice little storyline out of there. We'll have to, we'll have to seek them out and get a, and get a picture with the two of them. If, if they are in fact related, <laughs> otherwise it will be, otherwise it'll be, it would be very, awkward. it would be <laughs> very, very random. If you had two Ingrid, Ingrid Brit sons that were yeah. not related, right? <laughs> like, yeah. That's not a common name. No, no, definitely. And I remember that too. When I was reading them, I was like, Oh, I've heard this. Name. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> So let's go uh, 105 kilo M3s. We got Kenneth Bennett, Robert Cross, and Jim Kathios. So Melissa, okay. we'll kick it over to you again. What do we know? Yeah, so so another another group with a pretty wide spread. So so Jim is coming in at 617 and a half, um, Kenneth at, at 540, and Robert at 520. Um, Robert was a 102, uh, sorry, 102, a 120 last year. Um, so we'll see how that cut treats him. Um, Hopefully, hopefully it goes well and he's actually improving. Um, maybe, you know, like I know sometimes when you lose a little weight, like your deadlift goes up. So um, that could be good for him. But I, I do think that we probably won't get any surprises here. Yeah. And I think is Ken Bennett, is he just coming off of going to worlds in South Africa as well? 
uh, bench press worlds. I'll look that up while I pass it off to Amy and Julia. If you guys have anything, I'm like 99% sure. Yeah. Yeah. He was just, he was just at uh bench press worlds. So he's also coming back from South Africa. Wow. Okay. Finish him fifth. Win three for three, nine white lights. I'm just pulling up his meat recap right now. So yeah, so he's coming all the way back from South Africa as well. So that's going to be this. Uh, we have a few of them. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. warriors. I mean, I mean really the joy, back. the joy of being old enough to be retired. So you can just go do whatever. <laughs> that is a plus. That is a plus for sure. All right. Anything else on the M threes? Okay. Then we have a national champion on our hand in the M4, 105, Michael Dollard lifting unopposed. Just knock on wood for him that he doesn't bomb out. All right. Anything, does anybody know him? Anyone want to add any storyline or anything? Nope. Okay, then let's keep it moving. Let's move on now to the 120s. And in the 120 M2s, we only have two. We got Keith Carlosio, who's been traveling around, did all these meets. Awesome guy. And then we got Richard Acosta from New Jersey. So Melissa, take it away. Yeah. So Richard, Richard's got about a hundred kilos on Keith, unfortunately for Keith. Uh, so I, I would expect this to go well for him. Yeah. So maybe Keith, I mean, there's only two in this weight class in this mm -hmm. age group. So maybe get that invite and we'll see him in the Cayman islands. Yeah. All right. Is there anything that you all want to add to this one? Um, no. Okay. Go ahead. Well, actually, um, so actually Keith's, uh, wife i think is competing in yeah yep. keith and michelle yep she is yep. yeah they've been travel warriors i mean like i said they're both in panama they're both in canada they mm -hmm. host meets they do all kinds of stuff for us in florida um awesome people so i'm happy to see that he's gonna get a, a shot on one of the national teams mm -hmm. so okay let's keep it moving then we got uh another national champion m for the 120 m3 we got randall witt Knock on wood for him. Let's get let's get it, Randall Witt. Let's go get some gold medals <laughs> in Mongolia or Cayman Islands, wherever you choose. I don't know if they even get the choice. I keep saying that, but um, is it is it a choice? Uh, what we'll to ask Jim Brown? I guess. Yeah, I mean, it kind of it kind of is. Um, like you get nominated. This is class, this question, right? So, uh, you get nominated for the world team, um, and then because of, like the deadline for North Americans, like you can do both. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, anybody who turned down worlds would go back into the nomination pool for North Americans. Um, but this year I think it's going to be a little bit weird because from the conversations that I've had, they're literally putting in the nominations on the flight to Malta. So yeah, <laughs> yeah we've got a, a really around. tight turn on this for, for North Americans. Yes. Yes. That's for sure. Yeah. It's a super tight turnaround, but like you said, um, there's a nice amount of time between NAPF and the Cayman islands and, uh, IPF world championships in Mongolia yeah. that you could do both. And I think several people did oh, last year, like they LS did. Yep. LS did the Carlosios did just off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, let's keep going. We got a, um, <clears throat> 120 M4 unopposed Mac Hodges. So congrats and, uh, good luck. And please don't bomb out. Anything else for Max? Anybody know him? Okay. Let's keep going then. So moving into the 120 pluses in the M2s, we've got two of them. We've got Steve Davenport and Robert Fuller. And um, I know we had a hard time finding Steve Davenport because his name is Steven Davenport in open powerlifting. But he is known as a very good equipped lifter. And he is lifting both uh, uh, on Saturday on the raw side and on Sunday on the equip side. So he's doing both. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Robert Fuller. So what do y'all know about these two? Yeah. So Robert coming in has the higher nominated total, but similar to the conversations we've had about some of the other equip lifters, um, Steven doesn't do a lot of raw. So I don't know that we fully appreciate what he may be capable of. And I think also because he's competing in both, there's a strategic decision to be made as to how hard he wants to push um, on on the second day, knowing that he's going to have to go and lift equipped 
afterwards. So the good thing for that is he, he's not have to cut weight because he's a super. So that's great. Um, but I think it'll be very interesting to see what we actually get out of him on the day. Yeah. And so I think what Robert Fuller, we got a 732 kilo total in there. Um, it's not super recent. And then for Steve Davenport, he's got a 920 equipped. So, yeah. but only a 335 <laughs> raw. So I think it was, I think he's never done raw except for bench, bench only stuff. Um, if I can, if, if, if this is right, he's been around the game for a while. So, mm -hmm. um, rep in Nebraska, he, he runs meets out there in Nebraska for us. So good dude. He was at bench nationals. Um, great competitor, go big red, Nebraska corn Huskers. Let's get it. All right. Um, anything else you want to add anything, Amy or Julia? I mean, I, I just would go back to you. Uh, what's his rationale behind doing raw and equips? Um, is he doing it? Is his emphasis going to be on the raw side and he's just going to phone it in on equipped or vice versa? Cause that's going to make mm -hmm. a difference on what we see from him that day. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also with Robert Fuller, um, Robert's got a pretty big open powerlifting goes back pretty deep. He's also done equipped stuff in the past as well. Um, looks like around a 687 was his most recent, um, which, which he finished second at worlds last year and the 120 plus M twos. So let me just quickly, I think I got that right here. I can pull that up for us and see where he finished and what his story was there last year. Yeah. So he was competing for Puerto Rico and mm. so he's come over from Puerto Rico. So that's what it is. Um, <clears throat> that's huge. The U S team last year finished in third for M twos. And, um, he, he finished in second, in the one twenty. So where we didn't have when the 120 pluses where we didn't have anyone. So that's, that's a nice addition for mm -hmm. team USA to help us win that, win that class. All right. That's everything from session one by my account. Uh, is there anything I'm missing that you see, Melissa? No, nothing. I don't think I don't see anything. All right. So let's move on. That was um, day two, session one. Now we're moving on day two, session two. This is the last session for classic. So we'll start off with the 74 kilo M1s. And so in this, in this session, we only have M1s. Um, so there's no other master lifters. There's M1s and there's juniors, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And that's it. So, all right. With the 74 kilo M1s, we got Mike Deutsch and Jamal Grimes. Right. So I could not find anything on Mike Deutsch at all. Okay. So either there's something, something weird in open powerlifting or. I found a 380 for him, okay. but I don't know. I don't know how accurate that is either. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he really is a, a huge unknown, right? He, mm -hmm. maybe that 380 is accurate. Um, maybe, maybe his total is far higher than that. And we just, we don't know about it. Maybe that was a token meet who knows. Uh, so that will make this interesting to watch because we just don't know what we're going to get. Uh, Jamal Grimes is a local lifter I actually roughed his last meet. Um, and so that six Oh five, I may have said something to him after his third deadlift about, you know, maybe you could do the warmups in the back next time. Um, okay. because that's how quickly it moved. So, <laughs> so it's, I would suspect that that 605 is not really indicative of his full strength if he's if he really pushes himself. Wow, that's a big total, 605. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll be look on the lookout for a really strong solo performance there. And if Mike Deutsch, it looks like he's from Arizona, so maybe local. Yeah, the, then this is accurate. So it's a 380, but uh, with USAPL. So he hasn't done a Powerlifting America meet yet. So he must be doing the qualifier while he's down there, I'm assuming. Okay. Um, but if he's from Arizona, this does check out and the 380 is accurate. Okay, then. So it looks like Jamal Grimes, knock on wood, he's going to run away with that one. But, you know, hats off to Mike Deutsch for coming out and, and showing out on the national stage. All right, let's move on to 83. This is one we've all been waiting for, 83 kilo M1s. We've got the battle, Jonathan Losa, a.k.a. Mike Losa. He goes by Mike. Lauren Cohen. Mm -hmm. Gabriel Malone, Todd Straub, and Anthony Perkins. Yeah. And, oh no, and that's it. Yes. Yeah. So, so Mike Losa has the, the higher total coming in. Um, but, you know, he and Lauren did go back and forth last year. 
So uh, Mike, Mike's just coming back from Bench Worlds. So I, I think it's going to be a, a good fight between the two of them. Also, not that far behind is Todd Straub. Mm-hmm. So um, the three of them could make it all very interesting to watch that class. Yeah, really interesting. Um, Because, yeah, he's right there. And it's just, I'm telling you what, Lauren Cohen's an exciting lifter to watch because it's like he either is like a world record level squatter or he's going to bomb out. It's like his depth is like right there. It's right there. It makes for very exciting, I'm telling you, um, like to miss an opener. He he missed his uh, second at Worlds. Like I I thought it was all over for Mike and Mike was going to run away with it. And then he comes out and gets his third one. So, I mean, he, he makes for drama filled lifting for sure. Mm. And then, you know, Mike is just steady. Yeah. Very strong, big subtotal guy. Um, you know, massive bench has a bench press world record that he just rebroke his own bench press world record out in, uh, South Africa at bench press world championships. So, and just one of the sweetheart guys of the sport does everything. Mm-hmm. We'll lift and then go spot and load in the very next session. I mean, just, yeah hangs around, yeah. helps people on equipped out in bench nats. Um, Austin Brown was talking about how Mike helped him out. Um, after lifting the previous day, he helped him out get into his bench shirts and stuff like that on the, on the bench nationals. And, and Austin even sent him a bench shirt after that to try to get him to go equipped. I think I saw a post where he was going to try it too, but, um, <sighs> just, a, just a nice guy, um, goes out of his way to help people out. And is just a nice, sweet kid. So, all right. Um, M- Melissa, do you want to make a pick? I mean, so Mike's best total last year was 705, which does put him him well ahead of the field. Uh, so if he has his best day, he's going to get it. And like like you said, he's always there to help. You know, he's a super nice guy when you talk to him. So, um, and I don't know, Lauren may be 100% just as nice. I just don't, I don't know. Uh, so I, f- I feel like I got to go with Mike. Yeah. Lauren, um, has a very interesting story because both his mom and dad also lift and they also came down to Panama and lifted. And it was a hell of a hell of a story too. Cause I think they're definitely like M fours and, um, yeah, Lauren is a Harvard professor. Um, oh, yeah. so very interesting guy. Um, very smart. Um, another one of these ones where it just shows you like the diversity of people that we have in powerlifting, you know, like you just never know. Like if you saw him on the platform, you wouldn't know, but you talk to him. Yeah. He's a Harvard professor. So how cool. I just love that. Um, hanging out here with us, low hanging power lifters or whatever, uh, the yeah. scrubs. Uh, I don't know. That meathead stereotype really doesn't seem to hold true, right? We got doesn't. a lot of doctors. We've got a lot of engineers. Yeah. We've got a lot of really, really smart people that also like to lift all the weights. And then we have idiots like me. So, all right. Um, so we got everything. We, we, we round out, we round out all the corners. All right. Um, anything else you want? Okay. We need to go to, Amy and Julia on this one. Amy, wh- what's your take and who are you going to pick? I, I'm leaning towards Mike. Um, I think you've got both Mike and Lauren are just so experienced and I tend to lean towards experience. It's kind of hard when both of them are so experienced, but uh, I lean towards Mike. I do want to point out um, Gabriel uh, Malone, he competed in 2017 and then took a long hiatus. And before he took his hiatus, he had a 697.5. Um, Ooh. yeah, so mm. he's not back. I, I followed him on Instagram before I came on here just to see what he was doing. Uh, it looks like he's not quite back to that level yet. Um, but I would be interested to see in the future if he's able to push them. Um, cause you know, maybe next year we'll have a three-way battle there. That well, you just added a wrinkle to an already very <laughs> wrinkled up, uh, class here i mean this this is a battle this is a crazy good battle i mean I, i'm really pumped for this session two on day two um because obviously you know we we hang out a lot with mike losa so we got some skin in the game with this one but i mean wow this this could be a, a great battle here so um all right um julia what okay. are you what, who are you picking i know you okay. went out super late with mike losa in austin <laughs> really, um he drove uh ray williams and i to uh to a restaurant so uh to dinner that was that was quite a a car ride um so speaking of another doctor yeah exactly 
um yeah no i mean that was that was uh phenomenal just you know every everything ray williams says like i'm, I'm listening but um you know uh sorry mike is he's a really nice guy i had no idea he was a master's lifter to be honest like he doesn't look I, like it I, yeah that's not that's why i call him a kid yeah yeah he looks at his mid-30s and um you know lifts like it too apparently so um i'm I'm going to go with him. And the reason is because um, he is very consistent. And I think, um, you know, with Lauren maybe not always hitting depth or having issues with depth in the past, um, I, I think that, uh, you know, Mike already having the higher total is going to put more pressure on him. And I think um, these other lifters coming up, you know, um, like Todd and Gabriel, it adds, it does add a wrinkle and it does um, put pressure on these top two to hit all their lifts. Yeah. And I think that it could really be a situation like we had with the 120s and nationals, um, you know, something like that. But in a situation where there's a lot of pressure and there's multiple people who are uh, contending for the title, I'm going to always have to go with the one who has the highest total and has um, the most consistent lifts and that's my glossa. All right. <clears throat> it's unanimous. Everyone's picking Mike Losa, but um, be, you know, you never know. Lauren's got a big squat and if he can get it in, it's going to be tough. Um, Mike has yeah. obviously been pushing his bench though. Well, so. this is... Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, this is, I mean, this is why we have Mace, right? So you can look at the nominated totals, but anything can happen when you step out on that platform. So, you know, we're making our best guess off the nominated totals and people's consistency in their experience. Yeah. But you really just never know. And our extreme level of expertise. Um, you can't count that out. Um, but yeah, but Todd and Gabriel right there waiting in the wings and anyone slips up, they're going to steal your spot. I mean, if, if Lauren doesn't, if Lauren could go from, you know, gold medal position to missing squats and being not on the podium, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, could be a really exciting one. So, wow, that 83 kilo class is stacked and uh, that's going to be a fun battle. All right, let's keep it moving then. Um, 93 kilo M ones, Kevin Deutsch, Michael Garoso, Marcos Sanchez, Ray Padilla and Lane Norton. So, uh, Melissa, let's kick it over to you. Yeah, so we talked about this a little bit at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Um, Leigh Norton and, and Michael Garoza are very, very close. Um, both of them have had 800 totals in the past. Um, and Michael's last meet, he missed a couple of lifts. Had he gotten them, he would have totaled 755, but he would have come in this with the highest total. Wow. So he, he certainly looks like he's capable. Um, and it'll be, be very fun to watch them push each other. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've, I don't recall it. Lane was super hyped up last year at, at, at nationals and that's like his style and he does it in mm -hmm. training. You see it on his Instagram videos that he gets super hyped. I don't recall that. Did he have a tight battle last year as well? I don't, I don't know that he did. Um, I think Ray Padilla, fin Padilla finished second. I remember them on the podium because it was father's day and they both had their kids with them on the podium. I remember them taking pictures together, but I can't remember who who came in uh, second. If he had a battle, it always seems like Ray or that uh, Lane is in a battle, like with himself. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, and he's he's certainly he struggled with injuries, um, and he is always hyped. Like we could hear him from the audience in the warm up room at Worlds hyping himself up. So, yeah. like he is always going to bring the hype. Yeah. All right. I don't want to steal too many of the storylines, Amy. What's what's your take on this one? Well, I was looking up to see uh, where he sat at uh, nationals last year. I, you know, this one's a hard one for me because Lane's just so experienced. Again, I tend to lean towards experience. Lane's experienced. He's confident. He's feeling good. He's going to be hard to beat. Um, but Michael's training has gone really, really well. So it really, it's, it's going to be a toss up between the two of them. I, I tend to lean a little bit more towards lane, but I think it could be either one of them. Okay. And then Julia, any, any further insights? Yeah, I, I don't want to pick against lane. Um, so I, you know, I think this is going to be really close. Um, 
I couldn't tell you um, who I honestly favor here. Um, it's just, uh, they both have uh, great stories. I think, um, you know, Michael has hit, um, it looks like an 800 total in a higher weight class. It's, it's always, you know, if you have hit those numbers, um, even if you move down a weight class, like you're going to lose strength, but you've had that weight on your back. You've had that weight in your hands. Um, on the other side of this, I mean, Lane is, um, you know, he's, he's incredibly experienced. He's won nationals at the open level. Um, and I think he knows how to deal with his injuries and he knows mm -hmm. how to deal with the competition. He knows how to deal with pressure. And so for me, this is really, really too close to call. Wow. It's, it's a very exciting one. I, the, the only thing is, so the 737, like you said, that was done at a power build meet at 93 kilos at 40 years old on the dot. And, um, you know, recently under, under power of the America standards in, mm -hmm. in the IPF. So he has done it, but before that he's been all USPA. Yep. So we're talking deadlift bar. We're talking 24 hour weigh-ins. And he hasn't been a 93. He's been a hundred, a 110. You have to go back. I mean, I guess he did, he did compete in 93 at USAPL back in 2019, um, where he did a 745. So, but at age 36, so it's just, it's so hard to tell. There's like so many factors that you could, you could kind of, but I would say if you just look at the determination that Lane has been training with since worlds winning that world title, he, uh, posted something like, I'm going to take some time off after this. And I swear to God, he was in the gym the next day and I was DMing. I just was like, you, you know, they couldn't pay you to walk away from the gym right now. You know, and he was so fired up after winning that, that world title, um, mm -hmm. after all those years coming back and getting it. So I just kind of feel like the determination is there. I don't know anything about, you know, Michael, you know, personally, I can just see his open power thing. He's a seasoned competitor. I mean, he's mm -hmm. been competing since 2012. Um, but a lot of his competition has been in USPA. He's had a handful of USAPL meets as well. But um, so I don't know. And this is going to be kind of an unknown for me, at least with Michael. I don't know him, but I mean, I, I, we definitely know what we're getting with Lane. So, all right. You guys want to make your final picks on this one. Let's, uh, Melissa, <laughs> did you make a pick? I didn't, and I still don't want to. Um... <laughs> Nobody does. I mean, you know what? Fine. Lane bought me a Barrett World, so I'm going to go with that. Cause that's, I, I literally have nothing. I have no better reason to pick somebody at this point. Yeah. It's tough. All right. Amy, did you pick, you know what? Since Lane has never bought me a beer, I'll go with Michael. There you go. Oh, Lane. <laughs> yes. You got to buy a beer for someone now. I want to get these picks right. All right, Julia. Uh, so I'm going to go with Lane because, um, we know that he can perform on the highest stage in IPF. And um, to me, uh, that says a lot. We know um, he lifts to these standards, whereas Michael is very strong, but um, I think in other um, federations, uh, some of them that have deadlift bars, some of them that don't have the same bench rule. Um, so uh, my pick is Lane. I think that he has less adjustments to make. And I think ultimately um, that's going to do him well. Yeah, I think that's a safe one. I mean, it's not safe by any means, but it's just, God, if you try to think of Lane not winning this, I just, I just don't see it. Like, I feel like he will just absolutely do whatever is necessary to win this. But all right, I'm pumped. And I I'm did gonna... look it up. Okay, um, I, I was going to say, I did look it up. He didn't have competition at Worlds or Nationals last year. So no, he there did was at nowhere. Worlds. He did not, at Worlds? Yeah. No, so he he loaded his his third deadlift, which was a, a giant Hail Mary, and then missed it. So he was he was definitely locked up in first place by the third. Yeah, you're right. The, but it was, yeah, second, second, second place was 677.5, and he had a 742.5. Yeah, yeah. It was... Um, it was after Gabriel missed two squats. Um, so like, like they've, they were very tight and then Gabriel missed two squats and then he also missed a bench. And if it wasn't, it would have been a lot tighter. So, um, yeah. he, he did have it locked up on his second dead. You're right. And he did end up 
Wait, they did end up with the same total, 742 and a half in lane one on body weight. Um, so but you're right though, mm. like he he still had a full on third dead that he didn't need. Yeah, I've got this open on good lift on the results. Okay. I've got it on five. open powerlifting, so that might be yeah. Why? Um, so yeah, I, I remember it vividly. I was I was very in tune to this one, and I remember DMing uh Ryan Lapidac because we're both big lane fans. And I was like, Gabriel missed a squat. Gabriel missed a squat. Like, missed a second squat. Lane's going to be a world champion. Lane's going to be a world champion. And we were so excited about it. And then um, Gabriel missed a second squat. But um, he's Gabriel has a big bench. And so he came back and, and picked up a couple kilos on bench. Um, and then, yeah, it all came down to those final deadlifts. Lane had the bigger deadlift anyway. Did have it locked up on his second. So that's why they tied with 742 and a half. He, Lane could have definitely gone well yeah. and above and beyond that. Yeah. So he did, I, I, I think if there had been... You know, if he hadn't had it locked up, he probably would have taken something less because whatever yeah. that third, I don't remember specifically what the third was, but it was some kind of insane number. Yeah, it was, uh, he went from 307.5 to 325.5 on his third pull, which is a big jump. And I think he was pulling for the world mm -hmm. record at that point. And yeah. they put that number in after they they put a attempt change they in had after, solid. Oh, okay. after Gabriel yeah. missed. Yeah. Um, but if, but I mean, Gabriel though, in that like 10 kilos, he left out, he left 10 kilos out there. Um, on both squat and on deadlift. So he could have also had 20 keys in his pocket. Mm -hmm. So it would have been close. It was definitely, they were, Gabriel was nominated number one. I know that. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of like, it was, it was awesome whenever, I mean, sorry, Gabriel. It was awesome when he, when he missed those <laughs> <laughs> squats. <laughs> okay. So we made our picks on that one. We beat a dead horse there. Uh, went and relived the world's experience with uh, Lane, <laughs> but let's move to the one Oh fives where we have the best lifter from worlds and them once and the nicest guy, the happiest, most fun power lifter in the whole game, Ellis McLean. We also got Tim Mercer. Also, I mean, this is the class of nice guys here. 105 mm -hmm. M1s and then Jonathan Jurowitz, JJ. Um, they're both super sweet guys. These Jonathan and Tim, they both do a lot. Tim was announcing at open nationals. did a fantastic job keeping the crowd engaged. He also runs meets out in Portland. Jonathan runs meets out in Maryland. He's also mm -hmm. done expediting and uh, TC type stuff um, at high school nationals. He was in there. He also referees at uh, all the meets in Pennsylvania out there at Brown's gym and whatnot. So two super great guys. And then of course the greatest of the great guys in Ellis McLean. So Melissa, let's kick it over to you. Yeah. So there's a, there's a pretty, pretty big spread on this total. Um, you know, Ellis with that 865 total that he's coming in with um, is absolutely the biggest total of any of the m1s actually of any of any of the master men's so um if he's on form to hit that it it's going to be hard to beat him um tim looks like his training is going pretty well so we'll see if his numbers actually improve because who doesn't want a pr regardless of whether or not you win um yeah and then you know jonathan's gonna gonna be in there for for probably third for sure all right and uh, Amy and Julia, anything you guys want to add? Any fun stories about LS or anything? I'm just so I I'm I'm a little bummed that Ellis and I are not competing the same day, the same time, because I just want to be in a warm up room with him once, because that energy is just contagious. I mean, the way he is he is legitimately my what I strive to look like on the platforms. Like he's just this pure joy. And I wish that I could do bring that onto the platform the way that he does. Um, I did write a little bit of a note that his squat last meet wasn't, he had some bumps on his squat and I would like to see him improve that. So I'm hoping um, he hit um, an easy 310. Um, he's hit a 337.5 with USPA. And I don't know if a squat bar would have anything to do with that. Um, but he hit an easy 310 uh, recently in the gym. And so I think that he'll end up doing at least better than his last meet for sure on that squat, which would bump his total up a little bit. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to see him compete. Um, Tim, Tim and I have had dinner before his wife, um, Tim's coached by Arian. His wife is coached by Bill. And so um, that makes for fun, um, fun times in the back sometimes too. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I obviously Ellis has this, um, short of a bomb out, but, um, but it's a good class. 
Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I mean, I just, I, I think it's cool. Like you were saying like you wish that you could be in the warm up room with LS and stuff. And I think it's really cool for JJ and Tim, you know, to be back there with LS warming up and stuff. It's such a cool experience. And I know that Tim was at worlds last year as well. And mm -hmm. so he got to have that experience mm -hmm. and JJ was at NAPF and LS was at both. And so, you know, they've all got to hang out and experience that. So it's fun. They keep running this back again. Mm-hmm. All right, let's, uh, oh, Julie, I'm sorry. Do you have anything before I move on? Any LS stories? Um, not, not really a lifting story, but he was also at the, the dinner in Austin. He's, he's a really nice guy, you know, um, just like Ray Williams, like he's one of those lifters, like when he leaves everyone, you know, um, he, he has like, like, uh, what's the word gravitas, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, it's just going to be really cool to see him, to see him. Um, I mean, 865 total is at 105 is insane. It's insane for, for an open lifter. Let's be real. So, um, um, yeah, I mean, and he'll be on the same platform at the same time with Anthony McNaughton, who has recently totaled 900 kilos and is looking to go up to like 920, um, in the juniors. So, I mean, these, these guys are going to put on a huge show. I mean, the place is going to be electric because we're going to see some of the biggest totals of the whole competition, obviously um, coming from these one Oh fives, which is crazy. Um, one Oh fives are so strong. So that's going to be a fun one. And there's a lot of fun, good storylines there, but yeah, the, the dinner, the strongest dinner in the world or whatever <laughs> with we, Julia and me and Mike Losa. And then we had uh Ray and LS right there as well. And, and Lugo Enrique Lugo on the other side. And so, yeah, it was, it was a super strong dinner for sure. And very fun. Like you said, when, when LS, he just lights up the room. He just does. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, honestly, Anthony McNaughton coming up as a one Oh five junior, he's, kind of cut from that same cloth too where everyone who meets him really likes him as well so that'll be exciting all right let's keep moving here we got 120s we got the 120 m1s we got kenneth cameron carlos santo Liquido, and jared stone okay. all right so carlos uh, his nominated total in the in the powerlifting america database is 75 that is very very clearly <laughs> he qualifying <laughs> just to get it done uh because when i saw it i was like no nah, that's not I don't, I don't think that's the thing. Um, I I saw him, I believe, at the Virginia Pro a couple of years ago. Um, I must have got my names confused, which is always possible. So uh looks like his best total from like late late last year was 820. So if he's in that kind of form, um, then he's he's probably gonna have himself a good day and, and walk away with the national championship. Uh Kenneth looks like he's around 740. He did it does look like he took a very long break in his lifting. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if he makes some kind of rapid progress, just coming back to lifting after, after that break. Uh, so he could make it interesting. Um, mm -hmm. you ever want to, especially when you start talking about the bigger weight classes, right? Like, like the amount of strength they can put on is not the same as when you're, you're talking about a 74. So, yeah. um, we'll see how that goes. He's from Reno, Kenneth Cameron, KJ Cameron is his, uh, Instagram handle. He's he's really strong. I mean, he's, he's a really strong dude. And he, like you said, he's definitely coming up. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, he's, he's making quick progress and he seems very motivated. Like I was at the meet in Reno that he competed at. Um, and yeah, it was, it was awesome. Like he, he gets fired up, he pushes, he's definitely fired up and pushing right now. So, um, that's, that'll be cool to see, but Carlos coming over from the raw side or from the equip side, is going to be very interesting to see. All right, Amy, what's your take on this class? Sorry, I'm talking too much. Um, yeah, I have an 820 for Carlos, so um, not entirely sure where I pulled that. If that was that his was, last meet. It, yep. Okay, that was his last mm -hmm. meet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, I I think that he's he's a lot to do that and probably some. Um with Kenneth coming in second and Jared coming in third. All right then. Yeah. And I misspoke. He, I, for some reason, Mike Z told me about this guy, Carlos, and he's like, you got to watch out for him. And he did his qualifying meet down there at Albuquerque, Albuquerque Bar barbell where Mike, Mike Z's at. And, mm -hmm. um, he was signed up for open nationals. That's what it was. And, um, 
in the one twenties. And we were like, wow, this guy is actually going to be able to possibly be, you know, right there to pick up the pieces. If something happens with this battle at the top with Mike T and all this. And, um, and then I think he got sick or something and he couldn't come. And mm-hmm. so it's cool to see that he's going to go and, and do this. This will be his first nationals with power of team America. He's done a lot with USAPL in the past though. Mm-hmm. So he, and he's mostly all raw as well. Yep. And his total just keeps going up into his forties yep. mm-hmm. I and mean, it just keeps, yep. you know, he, he, he's added like almost a hundred kilos to his total from age 39 to age 44. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty inspiring to see. All right. Uh, Julia, is there anything you want to add to this? Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I think with these, these high weight classes, like 120, um, you said, uh, Carlos has added a uh, hundred kilos to his total. I think sometimes with these bigger weight classes, um, you know, being in your late thirties, uh, early forties kind of is more where people can peak sometimes like, you know, um, Dennis Cornelius, I mean, he was, he was competitive really late into his thirties. Um, so, I mean, you know, that, that kind of, um, makes sense to me. Um, and yeah, eight, eight twenty is, is monstrous. And, um, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what he can put up because that was, you know, at this point, um, a decent, a decent time ago. And if his, if he's improving by that much, we just have no idea, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, who knows? I, I'm, I'm excited to see him. Like Mike Z has told me stories and stuff. He definitely said to watch out for him. And so anytime Mike Z says something like that, then I, I take note and it, with a name like central Aquito, you know, you remember that one. So I'm, I'm excited to see what he might do and then go on to worlds and get some dubs, get some gold medals. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I'm not sure if we got Amy on that one, but let's go ahead and go 120 pluses. So we got the M1, 120 pluses. We got Cody Hansen, James Farrier, Michael John Sr., and James Finn. And this is going to be a fun one for the big boys to round out the show here. Yeah, it definitely will. And it looks like we're going to have some competition for for first between James and Michael. Uh, They've only got 20 kilos separating them. Um, I did not see too much i didn't didn't have a chance to get into like how those looked when they did them um but i feel like when you're a super and it's 20 kilos like that's that's nothing right that's That's, a lot that's the difference between a good day and a kind of off day so um i do think that'll be a good fight to watch um james is a little bit further back i don't think he can cover the ground necessarily um and then cody so his nominated total is 252.5 in the powerlifting america database um, but I, that definitely looks like it was a light qualifier for him, um, because his best recent total is 652 and a half. Okay. So he's going to have some ground that needs to cover to, to get into at least second. Um, but we'll see if he can do it. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is a, this is a cool one. I know both of these guys. All right. So Amy, let's get your take next. And uh, Melissa, who are you picking then? Did you pick someone? <laughs> I'm going to go with James. All right. All right, Amy. Or do you want us to go to Julia first? Uh, no, I'm fine. Um, right. I I would go, I, I'm, I kind of agree that a 20 kilo difference really is not huge. And I don't know these guys. I, I looked them up a little bit, but I couldn't really find much about them. Um. And so I'm going to have to go with a bigger total just from the nature that I don't have much information to go off of. Uh, but yeah, I, I'll go with James to you. All right. And Julia. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with James here. Um, just, I don't really know either of them that well. And, you know, 20, 20 kilos is not, um, you know, it's not a huge difference, but it's not insignificant either. Um, and so, um, I think that's going to lead me to pick James. However, um, when was Cody's best total? The 652.5? Uh, I don't remember now. It's and been it, a while. I'm just make it in my notes. It has, I think it has been a minute. He, t- he hit a 600 USPA in 2021, and then he hasn't competed in a couple of years since then. Assuming this, oh yeah, it has to be the same one because he's got an AMP on here. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
yeah, he hit a 647 in 2020 and then a 600. So his total went down. Both both of those were USPA though. Um, mm -hmm. So we know that that can make a difference. Yeah. And with that time off, right, we don't know how much improvement he's made. Um, and, and it really could kind of go either way. And I, I think one of the things that we haven't mentioned yet is part of the reason Masters, one, is a smaller pool, and two, Masters tend to lose some strength is life changes. Mm -hmm. um, the life changes that happen when you're in your 30s. I mean, we've seen it with Ray Williams where he gets married, he has a baby, he gets his PhD, he moves. Like those are when your big major life changes are happening and balancing training and, and, and kids and family and all that kind of thing happens. And so sometimes it is that someone comes back in their forties and is now rededicated to training and committing themselves to training, or they've had some sort of life change that means that they can put more work into it. And sometimes mm -hmm. it means that they now are juggling being the CEO of a company versus just, you know, a nine to five job or whatever. Um, and so that it kind of makes, it's what makes masters exciting. Um, but it also can make it unpredictable because we don't know what, what life changes have happened that, I mean, he's got some pretty spaced out meets in here too. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of, um, what I was, was getting at here is he, he obviously put in a very low qualifying total. Um, and this 652 was a while ago. So he, you know, it's reasonable to think that he could have had that time to really improve his total or, um, you know, and, and come in as kind of a sleeper, um, mm -hmm. to be trying to mm -hmm. like, you know, um, shield what his actual um, strength is from, you know, potential competitors, or it could be a situation where, you know, he just put in an easy qualifying total and he's easing back into it. Um, so, yeah. That's yeah. Nice. yeah. And I mean, honest, honestly, it makes, it makes good sense strategically, right? If you don't really want your competition to know what you're capable of, because you, you know, this is one of your first meets with powerlifting America. Like the answer is go ahead and take an easy qualifier and then just surprise everyone. Yeah. You know, so there's, I think there's certainly some strategy behind that. In addition to everything Amy brought up about just what does your life look like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so this is just an interesting note. For deadlift, he took a 102 point. So he took openers at the Duke City. He took yeah. a 60 squat and 82.5 bench, which are, you know, obviously like token lifts. And then his deadlift, he took a 102.5 and then he still took a 110. So I don't know why. That's just an interesting. Um, yeah. I, I always love people's stories behind why they did what they did. And I, yeah, why would you take a second at that point? I don't know. And it could have been to help out his competition um, to give them the time that he normally would yeah. have had to lift. Um, but yeah, just an interesting note. And it could have been too, like, like you know, we're our smaller federation right now. So for all we know, like that could have been a state record. <laughs> yeah. like one could point. have been, like, you know, just just check that one just off. Hit it. Yeah. Yeah. Because cause there isn't anything yet. Um, who knows? Maybe he wasn't happy with the 102 and he just wanted to get, let the judges get another look. So he got some feedback. Good point. Yeah. Um, well, I know something about these. So Michael Jean, he competed, he's only competed with Power of Teen America um, mm -hmm. in his whole career. And just a year and three months ago, he did his first competition ever. And he totaled 615. And then recently, I guess uh, in April, he totaled 720. So he's added like, what is that? Like 105 kilos on his total in like a year, a year and three months. And yeah. he's been to NAPF, um, in Panama and he did well. Um, he took first place. I mean, he's finished basically first place, every single thing that he's done, which has been mostly local meets in Florida or um, the nationals in Orlando last year. And then where he took second and then, uh, NAPF down in Panama. So he's got a record of success. His Instagram handles, the Haitian poet. He's an educator. He's also one of these super sweetest, nicest guys you'll ever meet. He's got a big body weight advantage on James Fer Ferrier. So he's coming in like 20 kilos heavier, but James, mm -hmm. um, also started and, and, you know, for going back to Michael John senior, I mean, he started lifting at age 43 and, you know, he's still only 44 right now. 
So like uh, he, he's still got kind of those newbie gains coming yeah. and I can tell you what he is in, he lives in the gym. Like he is posting constantly. Like he posts everything. Um, every day he's in the gym, he's working hard. So, um, I know he also has one like Florida state educator of the year or something like that this year. Great guy. Um, super sweet guy. Um, James Farrier, on the other hand, he also started kind of late in life, started at age 35, but did some RPS meets, then a USPA meet. And then his total did come down quite a bit. Um, looks like his total came down like something like over 27 kilos from, um, his last meet in 2022 with USPA and then his meet out in Buffalo this year. And that could be because of the, the weigh-ins and the, you know, the, uh, deadlift bar and all that kind of stuff. But I do know that he also recently is working with Delaney Wallace. So, um, Delaney's coaching him and I uh, got him into that meet out in Buffalo to get him qualified for this. And I think he had a pretty easy day. Um, well, it looks like he missed one squat, but other than that, look, like he went six for six after that. So, so yeah, very exciting to see both of these guys in the 120 plus. Um, like, it's, like I know Michael is an absolute sweetheart. I know James Farrier is working with one of our our nicest guys in the sport, Delaney Wallace. You know, so um, it's interesting, and we don't know what Cody Hansen can do. So it'll be a fun way to end in the show on session two um, on day two. Yeah. Julia, think, oh, we're gonna go ahead. Melissa? I was gonna say, I think this is one of the hard things about picking people, right? It's like, yeah. like if you've been around this for for any amount of time, you know a lot of these lifters, you know a lot of them personally, you have stories, yeah. you had, you know, you went and had drinks with them. Um, you don't really want to pick against anybody because, like, <laughs> oh, like, like I love these guys, but also like, uh, gonna... I see your training and your numbers, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> uh, especially when you meet Michael Jean, like you definitely you'll be like, ah, oh, I can't believe I picked against him, but doesn't matter. It's sports. It's all, it's all, fun. it's all fun and games. We're trying to hype it up. You know, we're trying to get eyeballs to show up and watch and everything. Mm-hmm. So um, we're doing, we're doing our little part here to get, you know, some attention for these guys. So, all right, well, that's everything for masters. I can't believe we made it. Um, and <laughs> I think we got everything done. You guys don't have anything on your list that we haven't checked off yet. Right. Um, no. All right. So, is there anything that you guys want to like re you know, revisit anything you want to re-highlight here at the end before we sign off on this one? It's just, looking, I, go ahead. Yeah. As I was gonna say, I just think it's going to be across the board. I think it's going to be an exciting meet, right? Even where we don't have good head to head competition because we don't in every weight class yeah. um, and every age group, I still think we're going to see a bunch of people do really, really amazing stuff and, and push boundaries and in some cases, really redefine what your strength can look like as you age. And I think that's always a cool thing to watch. Totally. It's so inspiring. Um, you know, it's to see people like just picking up a barbell at age 35, signing up for their first meet and putting a hundred kilos on their total in a year. Um, it's, it's inspiring. It shows you that anyone can do this, you know, mm-hmm. and there's no excuse. Um, Amy, anything that you want to pick up on anything you want to revisit? Mm. No, I think Mel just said it well. I think that was a good, um, yeah, I, I think it's just, it'll be a fun time. I'm looking forward to it. People ask me, um, have asked me, are you ready? Or, you know, what are you ready for? What are you excited about? And I'm like, the food after. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm ready for like, you know, we, we, we go to these meets to have fun. Honestly, Masters is so much about having fun. Yeah, we've got a couple of good head-to-head competitions, but at the end of the day, we're going to be, you know, having dinner and drinks together after. So, um, I'm, I'm really excited about being there and, and spending time together. For sure. Um, it, that's, this is the most fun meet. I tell everyone, you know, I've been to all the meets, um, for Pop 10 America this in the last, like whatever, 14, 16 months. And this is the most fun one. And it's because you have that perfect mix of masters and juniors and sub juniors coming out. And there's like scared bright eye, like this is their first thing. And then you've got <laughs> masters like LS, like it's been everywhere, seen everything. And you get that full range of stuff, you know, and then, and there's all the little storylines like Melissa Copeland coming back from her squad and Amy Hutchison <laughs> with the battles and um, just, you know, Lane Norton's going to be screaming and getting everyone hyped up and the way it's organized, I think with the, the two kind of somewhat primetime sessions um, and then, but, right out of the gate we got battles we got tons of battles in the opening session as well so um it's just stacked from top to bottom i'm super excited about it and yeah just hanging out is going to be a blast afterwards and supposedly there's really good restaurants super close to the hotel so it's going to be fun julio anything you want to uh re-highlight before we sign off 
Well, I just want to wish uh, Mel and good luck, and I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing you guys lift. I know how hard you guys have been training, and uh, yeah, um, I think it's going to be great. I I really uh, I'm really looking forward to the Masters for sure. Oh yeah, there's the the you can't ignore the Masters um, in power of team America. Um, cause we've got so many stars now, especially like, like these two. Um, and also like, you know, Le John Laflamme and Shelly and all these people. So there's so many cool storylines. I can tell you that the production value of this comp, um, compared to Orlando last year is going to be much higher. Um, so the live stream is going to be presented by SBD. We're going to have really good live stream commentators. Like two people on this podcast are going to be commentating <laughs> Melissa and Amy. Um, and it's only going to be a two platform meet as opposed to three, which means there'll be more, a little bit more resources put into those two platforms. The live stream will be a little bit easier to follow with only two platforms. Um, and then we're going to be doing press conferences like we did in Austin. So we'll have, we'll have everything from, from juniors to masters, um, all in those press conferences and yeah, the, just the production value alone with adding SBD in and having them do the live stream and just the platform set up and everything like that. It's going to be really nice. It's going to look amazing. So definitely if you're out there, if you're hearing this, make sure you tune in. If you're not, if you can't make it to Scottsdale, June 2nd, 3rd and 4th, we'll post the link on our Instagram stories. And we'll also have it up on the live page of the power of team America website. So you can all tune in and, and see all these amazing stories and superstar athletes that we just highlighted and see who gets to claim their spot on one of the U S national teams, like where the chips are all going to fall and uh it's going to be exciting so and you know who's going to go on and represent us um at on these big international stages at the napf and at ipf worlds all right well if there's nothing else from y'all uh thank you melissa amy and julia for being here and thank you to everyone who listens to power of the america podcast and with that we're out of here peace